All right, we have Zach slash Isaac here. Thank yes, you for sir. coming in, man. Hey, man, it's a pleasure to be up here, man. West Palm, this is my first trip to the rich and wealthy West Palm. <laughs> well, you're actually in Palm Beach Island. Yeah, Palm Beach Island. It's beautiful. But man. maybe beautiful. soon to be West Palm. Soon to be West Palm. Maybe. Oh, the ghetto. I got it. No problem. <laughs> Ain't no, nah, 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 I can't do that. <laughs> so what's with the Zach and the Isaac? Which one are you? Well, um, Isaac's my real name, but I go by Zach because, you know, when you go to prison, which I was in prison for about 16 years. Actually, I was only gone about 14 years. They give you some good time. But when I was in prison... You know, you had to have a nickname. You know, they they said, "Hey, no, 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 don't use your government name. Don't use your government name. That way, if people tell on you, they don't know who you are." Oh, sure. You okay. know, so I just came off because of, my dad used to c call me Isaac. You know, so whenever he'd say it, you know, my friends would hear Zach. They didn't hear I. You know, you hear the Isaac. You go Isaac. <laughs> They'd be like, "Oh, he's saying Zach. He's saying Zach." So I just, you know, when they asked me my nickname, I said, "Just call me Zach." So I went ahead with the and established the nickname Zach, and I kind of liked it. I kind of like I got out and I'm like I still like that nickname so I went by it. I like Zach better than Isaac. Yeah, me too. It's just easier. That's right. Right. <laughs> less vowels, you know. Yeah. I'm not not vowels. Less syllables. Less syllables. Don't ask me which which. <laughs> I'm not I'm not the grammar guy. That's for sure. Um. Okay. And then you were you grew up in Tampa. I grew up in Tampa. Um. Lived in Tampa all my life. Went to Robinson High School, um, Madison Junior High. Um. I've been a a, a tampon for forever. <laughs> <Tampon>. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I love I love the Tampa Bay area. It's um very friendly. It's grown a lot, and it's actually gotten a little hip. You know, coming back to it, you know, there's a lot of like wine bars and and different types of clubs that, that you have going on. They have the um the skydiving where you actually don't skydive. You just kind of float. They got a fan that keeps you up in the air. What the fuck? I mean, yeah, really? yeah. Have you seen that? Nah, have you seen that? Not not a lot of cities have that. So Tampa. Has gone and gotten hip on us, man. They, wait, they, wait. They, well, what do you do? You, they blow. What well, do they keep you up with a? Oh yeah, fan? you you jump off, I mean, right? I and should. then there's a fan that blows you from one side to the other, where you land on another platform, <laughs> like you're skydiving for real. Oh, have called, you done, it's have, called I dive or I sky or sky? Yeah, something. something yeah, you're in, yeah. Like a, you're in a little building, like a little cylinder thing, and you see so you can in, pull out. I just want to see what it, it looks like. Oh man, you have gotta, you got to go. Yes, oh, come on. Come on, of course. I mean, usually you're, you guys are scared of heights. Uh, I'm usually. scared of heights, too. <laughs> no, I had a really good friend, Jaron Hayes. And, well, and I'm, I'm, I'm definitely scared, of, but I've actually skydived. Like, when I was in college, because, you know, I went to the college at the University of Texas, and when I was in college, we went skydiving, like, um, they call them tandem jumps, where you are di skydiving with someone on your back, and you do that until they think you're ready to do it by yourself. Well, I got qualified to do it by myself, <laughs> and then I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going to do it by myself, man. I don't know. <laughs> and, and this is not racist at all, right? right? No, How problem. many other black guys were jumping off that motherfucker? No, there was none. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, right there it is. Yeah, there. Yeah, and oh, they, 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 they blow you from one end to the. It's cool as shit. It's cool as. And listen, you use muscles that you don't think you're using when you do that. Once you get off of that, you're like, oh, I'm sore. So, so there's actually somebody there guiding you. So um, I would do that. Well, that's the training part. <laughs> oh, that's the training part. Right? When they actually put you through the outside part, you're on your own. But that, listen, that's using stomach and back muscles you do not even know you have. I'm telling you. That looks pretty cool. If you don't, yeah, if you don't work out, when you get off of that thing, you're like, what the hell was I just doing? What the hell was I just doing? Wow. Cool. And that wasn't racist at all, by the way. No, no. I I don't, joke, listen, listen, listen. It's just I'm, a funny I'm joke. I'm you, I, I read that you wanted to be a comedian. Yes, yes. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And, I mean, what the and, fuck? I mean, and you can't say anything nowadays, <laughs> for Christ's sake. Right? Yeah, you can. Yeah, this, is a, this is YouTube. You're allowed to, to express yourself. You tell oh, them, is that right? Wait, right. wait if till you, you don't start like your it, YouTube. If you see how long that motherfucker I lasts. Mean, if you don't like it, don't like it. That's what you tell them. <laughs> no, YouTube will hit you. <laughs> oh, they'll hit you for that shit? Fucking right, they'll hit you. Oh, man. You say, Take it back. Take it back. Take the racial nah, joke nah, back. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> but if you say certain words, done. It's done. Yeah. Over. Yeah. Over. You got to be careful. <laughs> yeah. I don't even want to ask what those words are. I won't even ask. I'll tell you off because I don't want to say them on the thing. Off YouTube. We'll find out. Yeah. So you grow up in Tampa, good family growing up? Oh, yeah. Like mom and dad. My mom was an English teacher. You know, my dad was a bus driver. So um, I had um, three siblings. I have two. I'm the baby of the family. I have um, an older brother who's the oldest, and I have two sisters. So my um, sisters, um, what I remember as a kid is that whenever my sisters wanted to go somewhere, my mom would say, no, you can't go. You have to babysit me. And I remember they hated me because they had to watch me instead of going out with their boyfriends. 
And they used to they used to tell my mom, I'd rather do anything else in the world than babysit him. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand him. But they just told me the story the other day at a party that mom didn't even tell them she was pregnant. They like they said they came home one day and I <laughs> was <you> there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like what the what is that? <laughs> what do you say to that, right? I'm uh... like, <laughs> Right. Hey, I'm the surprise gift. I'm the surprise <laughs> gift that keeps giving. It keeps giving. <laughs> oh, you keep giving all <laughs> that, right? right? As life goes on. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So then you do that, and then you had said before that you were always into comedy, even yes. as a kid. Like, who are you acting as? Well, listen, I've been in, in a ton of different plays. Like, um, I was in A Funny Thing Happened to Me on the Way to the Forum. Um, I've I've done in Ro- Romeo and I was in the drama club in 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 high school also in college and then I also participated in different theaters outside of college you know once I got done I participate so I like doing drama but while I was there you know doing talent shows I would do stand-up comic comedy and I, I've won so I would get up there and just like deliver a couple of jokes and and what I what I found is like whenever I found a good joke in a joke book a long one where you act it out and I start acting it out then I would win because I would act out long in 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 trenching jokes you know, because I'm one of those people that I can play multiple characters like like Richard Pryor would do, like yeah. two people talking to each other. Like, hey, don't be talking to me like that. Who the hell do you think you're talking to? I'm not talking to me like that. Don't really talk, you know what I'm saying? So I could do two different characters. So I found that to be very helpful in, in my comedic career. So I pursued being a comedian for a while. I'm not going to say I wasn't that funny. It's just that I, I had stage fright, something horrible. <laughs> I'd be too afraid to get up there on stage and, and get booed off. So I would never really take a lot of chances. I basically just did competitions that I kind of thought I could win or I would watch the other competition and go. But, yeah, I always wanted to be a stand-up comic. So you had, like, social anxiety. When when you went out there, like, you had it down. Yes. Then when you saw 100, 200 people, you started yeah. to tense up. And then <laughs> yes. And then you got to build up the joke for the punchline. Yeah, I got to build it up for the punchline. And you gotta, And you got you to gotta get the kind of the right joke for the right people. You know, uh, um, back then, this was like, because I'm, I'm an old cat. You know, I'm in my 50s. So this is like the 70s and the 80s. So a lot of the racial stuff wasn't like hype then like it is now. You know what I'm saying? So you had to be kind of careful what you were talking about or what you were addressing. Because uh, um, like you couldn't make fun of different classes and different groups of people like you probably can today. So it, it, I don't know. It, it was different. And like I said, I was nervous um, to do it. But um, I had a lot of I had I had some good routines going down. I was doing pretty good. I was doing pretty good. I was happy with it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, today, I, I know, like, uh, Rogan was just here in Fort Lauderdale, and he takes everybody's phones. Oh, because, really? Well, because he, he's a comedian. And if he says something racist or just out of line in oh, today's yeah. society, then they post it everywhere. Oh, yeah. But how can Rogan, Lucas, Chappelle, all the, how can they be funny and not do that? That's what makes them exactly. funny. Exactly. Uh, humor is always going to be on the cusp. It's always going to be something that makes you think. You know what I'm saying? Because it's it's generally things that you find funny. Somebody's going to find offensive. You know, if if I tripped and fell, right? Somebody's going to laugh, and I could easily get mad, get up like, "What the hell are you laughing?" I just fell. I hurt myself. You know what I'm saying? But like, if you think about it later, you think it's hilarious. Because I I know many a times that I have family members fall. Right at the time, you're like, oh, but then when you talk back. Remember when dad fell off that ladder? Yeah, that shit was funny. You know right. <laughs> but now it's like it, it's so crazy. Yeah. You know, and and you are a comedian. You're being a comedian. So when you're walking in there, you know, they're a comedian like and sticking up for stuttering John because he got some shit about what he said. Now, yeah, I mean, he was hammered. <laughs> but I, but at the same time, and I even got on him a little bit because he was, he was killing, you know, Tyler. Yeah. He was yeah. killing Tyler. Oh, he was? Tyler, yeah, Tyler wanted to meet him, so Tyler was here. <laughs> and Tyler's, yeah, you know, an agent or whatever. <clears throat> oh, but was... I, whatever exact, his exact, uh, who knows what his what you would call him, but right, right. a good guy. Right. But, right, uh, Rob, I mean, John was just down. But, I mean, Tyler kind of bought half that, though. Woo. He did. He gave it to him really good. Oh, Revenge seriously? of the Nerds, and, and he yeah. was going. Oh, my and God. That, but, he was but, going in like that? Yeah, but then now. Now, in John's defense, he breaks out a packed lunch of sushi in between the, the interview. And now you've got Stuttering John 
one of the biggest uh, comedians listen, I, ever. Like yes. you know, from Howard Stern speaking. True. You're gonna come is in. He, is he a stand up comic by the he way? He is, yeah, he does. He he tours. He wow. Tours. Now he's not like a Chappelle or anybody like that, but he does stand up. Yeah. He goes around the country. He was just in Vegas prior. Oh wow. So he gets the crowd. So if you come in here with you know, sneakers on and dress pants, and they're not tailored. <laughs> you know, I mean, you cross your legs and like your pants are up to your knee, and then wow. you break out a packed lunch. I mean, John's gonna kill you. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. like, you don't do that with the. I don't. No. It's, you, it's, look, you don't do that. Per, per, who's not gonna kill you if you do that? It's like <laughs> sitting in the front row, in front of Dave Chappelle or uh, Chris Rock, <laughs> sitting in the front row, knowing that you're gonna get picked on. Right. You know. Right. And he walked in here just with the bait. Right, right. I, I mean, he lined it up. The guy's like, "Oh my god, I, I, I got, I got to slash him. I got to slash him." Yeah, I, I went to a, a comedy club just the other week, and um, the guy was making jokes because, like, I was there with a date that I had met from an app where I was because you know I'm going out because I, I just got out of prison. Yeah, so I'm going out on dates on our time app, right? And and they, dude, when I told him that, I mean, he went to town, our time. Uh, this is this is not your time. It's my time. <laughs> <laughs> what are you old folks? Stop. Give it up. This is a Viagra commercial. I mean, he went off on us all the way, day and night. But you Me see how bad it's getting? They got to take cell phones to go into a comedy club. Yes. That's crazy. I know. It's getting. They don't want you stealing material. They don't want you stealing material. They don't want you putting them out there. You know, they don't want you putting them out there because, say, Joe or Dave says a joke now before where it's funny and it's not all over the place. Now it's on CNN, Fox, ABC. Oh, Chappelle did this. He said that. Right. Not without saying, hey, Dave Chappelle was offered a gazillion dollars for his funniness. Right. So many words and walked the fuck away. Right. And now he's going to go do his jokes again. What do you want him to fucking change? <laughs> you, you know, good point. But now they would make it a big deal if somebody recorded him saying something insanely racist, whether it's against a white guy or a black guy or right. a Puerto Rican, whatever color. They'd make such a big deal about it that that's why they take the phone. Because <sighs> Lucas was telling me I was talking about David Lucas. He's opened up for Chappelle and Rogan, and they take the phones not because of whatever. They take the phones be now because of what they say. They don't want on you know, national news, and then it's this whole shit show. Oh, wow. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, I mean, we're in a different, we're in a different world, brother. You ain't lying. <laughs> we're, we're in a different... A, as we progress, we, I guess we progress, so, I mean, you gotta be ready for the time, you know, yeah. so, hey, but uh, listen, uh, just a shout out to you, you guys, you, <clears throat> you do an excellent job of just bringing the content, like, I've watched some of your videos, and you're good at just, you know what I'm saying, keeping up with the times, and you're hilarious. You keep it Thank hilarious. So I appreciate, I appreciate it. I appreciate this opportunity to be here to, you know, to maybe sling some funny stories or some jokes. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, so, thank you for coming in, man. Hey, I man, this, it. this is a pleasure. This is an honor for me. Thank you. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I told Matt he needs some better cameras. <laughs> <laughs> Blurry as shit. I mean, I mean, and get off the Y view, Matt. <laughs> Matt, get off the Y view. You break my well, balls. You know, Matt's got me. a big head, so he tries to make it look sl slimmer with the big y head. View. Yeah, I love Matt. Matt, I love you. <laughs> but hey, but hey, one thing about Matt is he comes, Matt, a hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, at all times, unless at he's fighting with time. his girl. He's a real dick when he's fighting with his girl. <laughs> when when he's not, when they're either getting along or completely separate, right. he's cool. If he's fighting with her, he. Uh, I don't know. Last time we checked, he was. <laughs> All right, well, you Matt, you would back know. with your girl. Is yes. he, is he's back you're with back. her again. You're back. No, nah, I think I think he's he's midway. You know, it's on and off, on and off, on yeah. and off, on and off. That's tough. That's yeah. tough. We're yeah. talking about Matt Cox, by the way. Yeah, he's been on here seventeen million times. Seven. He's been on. No, nah, like you seven. Lo you love him. You love him. I, I'm hopefully hopefully I get that much love. Hopefully I get that much love. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I need Matt in uh. Segments, <laughs> just a piece of the nah, time. I'm just fucking. Uh, no, I love him. He's a good dude. He's a good dude. To me, he's a good dude. Yeah. To Other you. people, I don't know. Uh, um, <laughs> so then you go to college in Texas. I went. I went to college at the University of Texas, Hookem Longhorns, where I, I I started off. I was a uh, I played football. Start in, off in college. In college, football? in college, in college wow. played football. I was a tight end. <clears throat> I kind of had a tragedy in my life that kind of took me off the team and kind of set me separate. But yeah, I started off playing football. had a, I had a semi scholarship. It was me and my wife. We were kind of struggling to make it, but you know, what I'm saying we we went through um, the the college time and and got it going. After that, I kind of branched out on my my own when I quit football and I just kind of worked 
odd jobs to kind of make it. And one of the odd jobs I had was like at this company called West Telemarketing in Sarah, in San Antonio, Texas, which was a, a telemarketing company where we were calling. Like a call center? Yes, it was a call center job. Uh, I can see where this is going to go bad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, listen. Um, That was kind of the first time I ever done that on, on that type of level. Because one of the first j- things they had me on was Sears Siding. The fuck like, is that? Oh, my. Like siding on the side of your house. Instead of, like, you know, people have wood houses. Yeah. So they put siding on the front of the wood so that you never see that the wood goes bad. Because, you know, wood goes bad. It gets termites and look like crap. Yeah. And so you put siding on it so it always looked like the wood's brand new. You can spray it down with water and clean it off. I mean, I, I had all the benefits down. You know how to do that shit? Uh, I know how to sell it. I don't know how to, to put the siding on the house. <laughs> all right. Because <laughs> they, they trained us to sell that stuff. So we, I'd sit in a call center making calls every day. It was my job to get cussed out by people about Sears siding. People hate Sears siding. I'm gonna tell you something. That was that was a a very interesting job because it we I'd be in a room with like sixty, like I'm in a room with sixty other people making calls. Like any given time, you can sit there and listen to sixty people on the people on the phone calling to offer Sears siding. Our 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 um, goal per night was one appointment. <laughs> really? For the Sears siding rep. Yes. You know what I think of when you say that is uh, Wolf of Wall Street when they're when he comes in and he's selling penny stocks. Yes. Like shit like that. Like yes. that type of environment. That, that's right? exactly what it was. Because, you know, I got promoted to like an assistant. I, I, they didn't call it a manager. I was assistant room person where I would go around and help keep people motivated on the phones. You're like logistics or something. Yeah, logi- right? like I like if you got depressed, like, oh my God, too many people are saying no. And I go over there and shut up, shut up. <laughs> get your get your head together, goddammit. Yeah. Get back on that yeah. phone. Here's and get pint. me on appointment. That's right. Here's this pint. Chug this and go, right? <laughs> we should have offered that. We said, here, smoke this. Okay, you're good. You're good. Let's get you're back on that city. Here's some sativa. <laughs> Here's a hey, motor phenol. I need hey. some caffeine here. We got we got the raw powder here, right? Hey man, I'm from fucking Sears Siding. Dude. They probably would have sold more. <laughs> That's right. Do a Sears Siding impression. <laughs> well, you know, like I'd be like, this is Zach calling from Sears Siding. Uh, I was calling you today to let you know that we can improve the value and the 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 quality of your home and the value. That's what the value and quality of your home by placing siding on top of those wood planks and eaves and overhangs which will give you an opportunity to, to make your home look better. You can clean it off with just your garden hose to clean your, your house, make it look good, make it look new, and it adds value to your home. So I want to go ahead and just set an appointment for one of our reps to come by there and harass you and look at your wife, if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but Zach, how if in a couple of years you end up doing 16 and a half years for fraud? <laughs> That's that's a long story, <laughs> but but all right. So so to get into that story, what happened was they took me off the site because I was pretty good. I was I was one of those pressure um, telemarketers where I would push people. I'm like, look, Miss Jones is just an appointment. Like, do you live there by yourself? This opportunity to have a gentleman come in and talk to you about signing it might be a good looking man. Miss Jones, a lot of our sales reps are very attractive. Uh, you said so? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I will bring him by. Yes, I will have him come out. Now at this, this time, eligible right? bachelor. But go ahead. <laughs> at, at this time, you're not you're not doing any fraud yet. No. And and I wanted to ask you, what did you graduate from Texas University in? In in I had a bachelor in in science where I was doing computer programming. Okay. Like I was actually learning how to do pat. This is back in the day where it was Pascal A plus. Mm-hmm. So I was learning how to program systems in order to answer business concerns. So I w- I'm thinking I'm going to be a computer sales rep. I had a job at a computer company, and this is where my goal was. I was going to be a technical support when it was making 50, 60 grand in, uh, a year, which is back in the 90s, which was excellent money. So that was that was my goal. But like I had mentioned, I, you know, I had a tragedy. My wife and my son died, and I kind of derailed. Sorry to hear that. I know. Thank you. And that kind of derailed my um, goal of what I was setting out to do. At that point, I kind of got lost in, like, I don't know what I want to do. Yeah. You know, and I don't know what, how I wanted to make money. And I had the job at West, but I had a very bad boss. Like I tell you, I was a, a, kind of a group leader. So we would, we would get up and we'd give motivational speeches that were kind of c- comedic. We'd make jokes. And um, my boss, like, I had a boss as one of those guys that always wanted to fire people. Like his answer for his motivation was fear. 
He was like, look, tell them they're fired. The way to get these people motivated to do better is to tell them they're fired. Like, we need to fire some people, let them know we'll get rid of them. If they need their job, they'll do a better job. That's how you do it. So him and I didn't get along too well. And so that's what kind of like in my mindset kind of made me kind of like that I'm not going to really comply. Like, I don't want to do what you want to do. I want to do something different. So what happened to me is they came along with the AT&T Universal card. You ever heard of that? Like the prepay card? No, it's not. Well, wow, prepay didn't come out to the twenty. Okay, to, yeah, <laughs> to the right. two thousand. <laughs> like America didn't have the concept of prepay until like two thousand five, two thousand six. Okay, that's when like, hey, we can make poor people prepay. <laughs> Rich people can pay afterwards. <laughs> poor people can pay ahead of time. <laughs> we don't basically saying we don't trust you. Give us our fucking money, and we'll give you whatever service you want. You know, it's fucked up. That's <laughs> including true. Including credit card, yeah. <laughs> including, we'll give you debit cards, credit cards. Whatever, as long as you pay us in front, we'll give you whatever. Charge you for every fucking thing that you do. We got twenty two percent plus <laughs> this, plus that, plus that, right? Hey, but all right. So, so yeah. tell me what an AT and T card is back right. in the day. An AT and T Universal card was a credit card and a calling card combined into one. Mm. So they they brought that in. Look, when they brought that into West Telemarketing, it was a huge deal. AT&T came in, they had a party, they had drinks, we were all celebrating. Like, AT&T Universal Card people were giving away a free credit card and a calling card. So wherever you go, you got a calling card number on your card and you got a credit card number. Bam, all on one bill. This is back when MCI, Sprint, and AT&T were competing for your long distance. Okay. Remember when you're making you call your yeah. mom? Yeah. And you had to have a long distance plan, yeah. friends and family, or whatever the fuck you had to have. Back when there was pay phones? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Back in those days. <laughs> Holy fuck. You know what I'm saying? Well, you, did, you, did, you didn't give a fuck what number you dialed. Like, I can call you from a West Virginia number. It doesn't fucking matter because all that shit's the same rate. So, back in the day when it, it cost you money to dial long distance, ATT had a universal card. So, it was a credit card and a debit card. It was a credit card. And a and a um, phone card combined, so they had us giving away that card at West Telemarketing. So when you're giving away that card, people give their personal information hmm. to, to get the card. So I'm one of the sales reps gathering people's personal information, and 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 as I stated before, what happened to me is a guy that got qualified for like a seventeen thousand dollar card. I think seventeen thousand was the max. I take him all the way through the confirmation process. Is where I record all of his information. I take him all the way through confirmation. And at the end, he goes, you know what? I don't want the card. So what happened to me when he denied the card, the fact that I was struggling because now I'm on my own. I was I used to live with someone, and now I'm on my own and struggling. I told myself, you know what? You know what I could do with a $17,000 card? I, I, I could get ahead. <laughs> so in my mind, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to change his information to mine, mm -hmm. and I'm going to order him the card. So I ordered this gentleman the card, and it actually showed up. That's what led me down the pathway to crime. Because when I did that, like at the time, identity theft wasn't even a crime. It wasn't a federal crime. It wasn't even known to be a crime. So for me to change his information, AT&T sent the card out. <clears throat> when they sent out the card, I actually spent his $18,000. <laughs> it took me seven months, you know what I'm saying? Because I wasn't used to having money. Like I, I used to live off of probably about a thousand twelve hundred dollars a month so he had 18 grand so the first month I might have spent two thousand dollars second month I might have spent three thousand that's only five you know what I'm saying it took me a while to start spending thousands of dollars per month so when I got his card in six months I went through the money but I, I was able to travel I went to Florida to see my family I was able to go out and travel to see I went to see the Grand Canyon you know what I'm saying <laughs> I started living it up on on this guy's credit <laughs> it opened my mind like holy shit like, if I can use his credit to to do these things, then I could use anybody's credit to do whatever I want because I get people's credit every day. Now, at this time, there. the way you got the card was you changed the address? Yes, I changed because he was pre-approved for the card. He's a pre-approved for a $17,000 card. So I had his social and his date of birth, so I entered all that information in. I just changed his address. This is like in the early 90s. This is like 93, 90. Probably no 94, 95. Because they're not verifying the address at the no. time, right? So you Look, can get away credit, with it. The credit bureau would change the address if you went anywhere and you applied for something. Just like that. Yeah, at an address. They didn't, they didn't, 
Like now they do super and multiple ver- verifications and they send you. But back then in your email address, they didn't have security on email addresses. You know how now you, when you log in, if you don't, they, they text your phone. Yeah. <laughs> if you log in from a, a, a strange device, they're going to text your phone. Hey, is that you logging into your email? You know, no, it's your back like, down. Who gives a fuck if I'm <laughs> logging into my email? <laughs> right. <laughs> nah, you know what I'm saying? So now when you're doing this, are you are you subconsciously thinking, wait, this is illegal? Or are you thinking like, well, there's no real law right now on this shit. I'm all right. Well, you know what? Looking back, actually, no. Like, in, in my mind, I don't even know if this shit will work. Like, in my mind, I'm thinking there's something in place that's going to stop me from doing what I'm doing. Like, I'm doing this, and whatever's going to stop me is going to stop me. So... Um, I'm not really thinking law wise, but when I look back, I'm thinking I was a pioneer because before this was an actual charge, I was doing this. I remember watching on television when prosecutors were were asking um, the the government to change the law because people are stealing people's identities. Like I'm listening to Congress being hearings being held in Congress about, hey, this guy's using my credit, using my name. And he said he can get away with it because there's no law to stop him. So they're actually passing the law. And I'm like, that's what I'm doing. So I'm realizing I'm not the only one doing this. And multiple people are realizing that there's a huge gap in the system when it comes to identity theft. So that's that's what got me into identity theft. And at, the, and at that time, they were just having hearings on how to fix the problem. Correct. Because they didn't realize that <clears throat> using somebody else's information, right, hurts that person but there's no crime against using that other person's information. So now are you thinking in your head, well, okay, well, I'll run this dry, and then when they put something into law, then I'll walk away. Or are you just thinking, fuck it. I'll, fuck this. I'm I'm done with this $1,000 a month shit. Now, <laughs> I'm going to live. Now, well, in my mind, it's like there's something. So at the time in my mind, there's something in place that's going to stop me, and there was nothing to stop me. So when I got all that money and I spent it, and he's maxed out, I just threw him in the garbage and went to the next card. You know what I'm saying? So there was nothing that really stopped me in my mind. It's kind of like, if you're going to let me do this, I'm going to do it. If you're going to open, like, if this is available for me to do, I'm going to do it. Because the infer- the opportunity was there, so I just took advantage of the opportunity. Now, was it was it like an adrenaline adrenaline rush when, when you got it through? Like, some people that do a lot of fraud, they, it, it's, more, it's almost like oh, yes. a high. It, like, for me, it became an adrenaline rush once I got with my, my, my second wife and we were doing it. It became an adrenaline because I didn't know what was working and what wasn't. Back then, it was all working. Back in the 90s, it was all working. In the 2000s, there were certain laws. Once they changed the laws up, then there were certain things in the place that made it more difficult to do what I was doing back in the 90s. So it was then it was kind of an adrenaline rush, like, will this work or will it not work? Will this work, will it not work? So I was doing what I thought would work or would not work, you know what I'm saying? To, to get it. So it was a adrenaline rush then. Back then, everything worked. Everything, back in the 90s when I was doing it, I did it for about three years un, untouched. With the same company? Or were you moving around? AT, yeah, with AT&T. With, like I would just simply, if I got, if I picked you as a person that called in, then I would take your AT&T. I only took 18,000. 18,000 was their max. Actually, they moved it up to 21,000. So I only took people with $21,000 worth of credit and I took your card and I maxed it out. And and what I just after I maxed it out, I threw it in the garbage. So that's all I was doing. So I was using AT&T, I would max them out. Then I might go to Chase cuz Chase was pretty much giving out a lot of money out. They were getting out like 40, 50,000. But this whole time you're still with that one company. I'm still with that one company. Nobody's Telemarket. catching on to this? No. No. How okay, so when you go drop when you go blow 18k on a guy's credit card the, the most stupidest way i would they have those checks that they issue that you can write on your credit card so i would get the checks and i would write myself a check for 14 13 14 thousand and the other person has no idea they have no idea the, the, the credit card and the bill was coming to my house oh, once sure. i maxed him out and then i changed the address to some obscure place and say okay uh, i'm gonna take this one and the bill will come to my house i'd write myself a large check and i kept getting your bill until I spent all your money, then I just send you to another address. So I was just stealing the money. And now, back then when you were doing that, right, would the only way that that person could find out that you were doing it is if he went, say, went to get a car and they run his credit 
then they say, hey, well, you have, you know, you owe 15000 with AT&T or 18000 Right. If he doesn't go to get something, he's never, he or she he, is he, never going to know. He, he or she never knows. Or, like, um, a lot of those people had, their credit was so good that my blowing their credit would, and would only affect them if if they're, like, they tried to get a large item, like maybe a house. Like, eight people, those people had, like, 800 Beacon scores. So I might take them from 800 to 750. You know what I'm saying? And they don't even notice it probably. They don't even right? notice it. Listen, and for a while, I would pay their bill. You know, I, I'm like, well, just pay their bill until- Pay the minimum yeah, so you can keep it running, right? Keep it running and then toss them. By the, time I to, by the time I've gotten all their money, I toss them out. So I might have spent $300, but I got 20 grand worth of, you know what I'm saying? I keep yeah. it for three months. And I start spending money faster and faster. Money is addictive. I'm fucking right, dude. <laughs> yeah. You know, like when I came, like I tell you, when I started off broke, I might have spent a thousand dollars, twelve hundred dollars in a month. That's for my bills, groceries. I had no expenditures where I was going out. I wasn't going out. I'd go home and say, okay, let me see what's on CBS. Well, you, well, you're going from under a thousand a month, basically, to, to spending now you got seven, eighteen thousand. Yeah, spending seven and eight thousand. Like I went from there to spending seven to ten thousand dollars per month. Now traveling, taking taking girls on. Like, bitch, you want to go to Las Vegas? Let's go to Las Vegas. Isn't that the greatest feeling when you can do that? <laughs> Sporadic and shit. Right. That's oh, no. it's all it's all. That's, awesome. that's, that's, that's the most. Hey, you do that I, legitimately. I, See, you do that legitimately. That's what's beautiful. You need to do that legitimately. I, I don't know if it's worth sixteen years, but. <laughs> I mean, no, no, not that much. And and the 16 years was like at that point when I got that time, I, I had stole millions. Yeah. Like I, I had I, I took on like my transformation in fraud was always dependent upon an arrest. So I would do this, do this, do this, do this. I get arrested and say, OK, I can't do this. I'm going to do this. Oh, that works. So I would do this, do this, do this, do this. I get arrested and say, OK, I can't do that or this. So I'm gonna do this. So yeah. Then I do this. Well, at least you, you were like strategic about it, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, so you you get away with this with AT and T, right? Right. When you're doing this, are you are you moving houses and apartments? You know, because you're changing it to your billing ad or your address. No, I wasn't. That's what that's what caught me. That if, if you would have moved around every yes, so often. If, if if in my mind, because it it was never a problem in my mind. I never thought, hey, having everything come to my house is a red flag. You know what I'm saying? So the cops finally came to my house. Like, what the fuck, dude? You know, I had like nine people come here. What the <laughs> fuck? Is so now how long did it take from when you started this with AT&T until you got the knock? Two, like 30 months. God damn, it took them that long? It took them that long. So, okay, so the first time they come after 30 months. Oh, they came search warrant. Uh, they came with the whole FBI, thing? Yeah, they were ready. They were ready. <laughs> and what's funny is I had a warning. You know what's sad is because I I was living in a con in a um, townhouse. This is in in Vinings, Georgia, which is a a ritzy area. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, the lady up front, I went to pay my rent, and she said, you know, she told me, she goes, I'm glad you came by here. She goes, last week a detective came by asking me who lived in that apartment, and I said, huh. Shout out to that lady. Yeah, I'm dumb. I'm like, well, I mean. Obviously, he doesn't have anything. Otherwise, he would have came back. Well, in your mind, you've gotten away with it for two and a half years. Yes. And you know how it is. You start to get content, yes. cocky, yes. like now, now. But subconsciously, you know. Yes. I mean, when you're going after she tells you that, you're blocking it out. But you know something's coming. Subconsciously, yes. you know. Yes, yes, yes. You, you know that feeling. <laughs> so, yes. And, and so it came. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know why I was surprised, but it, it came. And, you know, they searched my house and they opened my eyes. Took me to jail, you know. Um, I bonded out, but like that was that became the beginning of like doing what I was doing, going to jail, doing what I was doing, going to jail, doing what I was doing, and, and that's that's the beginning of my trial until you stop me. Till the big thing. Okay, yeah. so when when they come the first time with the AT and T, what what was it, like the what was the the deciphering factor that got them the warrant to come get you on this? I just think too many people, like, they're telling me, you had this guy and this guy come here, you know what I'm saying, then you move them somewhere else. I mean, they knew what was going on. They they came, there was really no evidence, except, you know, they came and some of the things I bought online, they went and they re recouped it, some of the stuff that I ordered, you know, with the card. 
But as far as like having the card and actual, they didn't get any of that. So they just kind of just like, okay, we're taking you to jail because it all came to your house. You're the only one that lives here. You could plead the fifth on this one, okay? <laughs> all right. Okay, don't get yourself fucked up. Did they catch every one that you did? Just plead no. the fifth. If- no, they did not. Okay. Did all not. right. So they come, they get you. They take you to jail. You get bail. Right. right. Now you get out. I now get out. You start up right again. I start right back up. But not with AT and T. Yeah, with AT and T. I'm <laughs> like, I got to pay balls. a lawyer. I got to get a lawyer. I need a ten grand lawyer. AT and T doesn't <laughs> know you just got raided. I don't know if they knew or not. It just it never dawned on me that I would have to stop. They they stopped me, so I'm like, okay, I can't do AT and T anymore. <clears throat> right. Like AT and T <laughs> made it where like, okay, they're they're kind of hip to me. I'm doing the same thing, so I'm gonna do this, you know. And so then I started moving to Chase and doing other things. They, they as they got hip, I changed. I changed process. I always change process as they got hip. Once okay. they knew what was going on, I changed. Then it. what was the sentencing on the AT and T? Six a, months. Really? That's it. That's it. It was yeah. state. It was a state charge. State it charge. was. It was. It was bullshit. So then you get out, you realize what you did wrong in that case, right? And now you're with Chase or probably Wachovia at that time, right? Right. Okay, and then you're just on the same shit with Wachovia. I'm on, I'm on the same shit, and, and then I get like six. I think with at and I got like, I don't think I got six months. I think I got like, um, I think I got probation. I bonded out. I never went back to jail. I think on the second one, I violated that probation and ended up going to jail for six months with the violation and getting out on probation. And then I caught another charge and going, went in. And, you know, it it, it just it, it just combined. It's a re- revolving door. It's a revolving door. That was me. <laughs> yeah, so now you got caught with doing it with Wachovia? Yes. And then what they hit you on that one for? Like, these are all state charges. These are all in Georgia, so it was like six months. Mm-hmm. You know, it was, it was like one of them was a year, but you get two for one in the county time, so you do six months, which I thought was an eternity. I I'm like, and that county sucks. <laughs> Whew. I've never been in there, but well, county show in general just sucks. <laughs> And they, they put me on a county work detail. So I'm going out every day working. They're crazy to put your ass on a work detail. I know. It was worse. <laughs> it was it was worse because, like, at, at the, this, this is the 90s. So bank state. So they would send me. I'm trying to think. They sent me cleaning offices. They had me working at night cleaning offices, dumping trash. And so people who worked there would take their bank statements from house and put it in the garbage. <laughs> So I'd go in the garbage and go, oh, my God. Bingo. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And and I actually planted it. Like, I would take it and put it in my pocket, and then I would actually stuff it somewhere where when I got out, I could go pick it up. Yeah, I'm like, come on, man. You guys. <laughs> you don't know who you're fucking with here, right? Because <laughs> I'm away for six months. When I get out, listen, motherfucker. Yeah, I'm, I'm back on. Like, I I'm, I'm going to steal your shit, your shit, your shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got your wallet hidden? Uh, yeah, I'm- well, check I gotta, the, I gotta check, check the garbage. The fuck put, around check here. the garbage. Put. <laughs> check fuck, the garbage. Can't leave this motherfucker alone. <laughs> Listen, I've I've been I've been horrible all my. I've been what I call an opportunist. Yeah. Like if if you're slipping, then I'm going to <laughs> bury your ass. Yes, I'm gonna slide <laughs> right into that slippage area. And you know what? You have like that teddy bear personality. Yeah. So I could see how you could just fuck somebody up. Oh yeah. I mean, just throw them like all the way out. Throw yeah. them all the way off. Because you got the charisma, you got the lingo, and then you just have that teddy bear look. Yes, I, I could see how you, somebody oh, could yeah. fall for yeah. your shit. Oh yeah, throw. I, I've been doing that. I've been doing that forever. People, when I was in prison, people were like, "You don't seem like the kind of guy that would be in prison." But I'm that's myself, that's why you were so good. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, but I'm I'm an absolute criminal. I'm an absolute criminal. There are, there are actually opportunities. I'm thinking to myself, there's opportunities here in prison for me to steal. So I'm like. The opportunities are everywhere in life. There's nowhere that is not an opportunity for me to make some money. So it's it's horrible. It's horrible. So now as a fraud guy, when you sit across from Matthew Cox, and if somebody hasn't seen Matthew Cox, he's like the biggest And we met we met at Colbin by the <clears> way. And that's how you met him? Yes. When you sit across from him, do you see him without knowing his past as as a fraudster? Cuz like I sit across from you and I don't you just look like a normal guy that isn't up to anything. And I would assume no. that you probably looked the same way before. Oh, yeah. When I sit across from Matt, I know Matt's up to something. Really? You feel that way? Hell yeah. Because <laughs> he's arrogant or what, 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 what gives that off? Just his charisma in general. You know, I'm not, I'm not disrespecting him. I'm oh, just no, saying no, like, no, not. like me personally sitting across from him, I would think this fucker's up to something. I don't know what it is, but something. <laughs> With you, I don't see that. 
Oh wow. What what about you, Rob? When 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 you're when Matt's in here, when you look at Matt or you're talking to Matt, do you do you get that feeling that he's fucking up to something? Pretend you don't know what you know. I think he loves himself. Yes. Uh, well, that's obvious. Probably uh, probably more than we know. Yeah, <laughs> you could maybe get a little uncomfortable, slimy feel to Matt. I love you, Matt. You know, you know. You yeah, listen, smart as listen yeah. women because of the the different girlfriends that the women I talk to, I show them the podcast I'm on. Mm-hmm. Like I've had women comment that, like, I don't know, this guy seems like that other guy seems kind of slimy. I'm like, why do you say that? I don't know. I don't know if I would trust him, <laughs> Matt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, they, yeah. but they're like, we trust you, <laughs> but I don't. I don't know if I. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm probably way worse than Matt. That's a better way to put it, I guess. Right? Is it's like I would be like I know Matt and. Matt and I have our boundaries, right? You know, right. and Matt's a good guy, and he's done. He's helped me tremendously. You know, I have to give it to him. Amen. But when I look at Matt, I I think it's more of like, how would you describe that, Rob? I said I could love him again. He's probably gonna watch this later. <laughs> this slimy, slimy. I could I could see like a sliminess yeah. to him. Like he's you love him, but he, he's you know gonna, he's a slime ball. He's gonna yes. try, which I'm a slime ball too. He's gonna yeah. try to do something to fuck you. He's gonna he he's could, gonna benefit. He be yes. Correct. Yeah. That's the better word. Or, or well, and, you know, Matt always is like, listen, I'm way up here. I'm short, but I'm way up here, yeah, yeah. and you're down there. So, you know what I'm saying? I, yeah. Like, like he's he he. Matt's gonna put you in a place where you feel like subject sub. Uh, what is it? He's gonna term? be he he's gonna be the alpha. Yes. And that's why him and I a few times had like we would kind of. If he's in a bad mood, we have a tough time because I, I'm kind of alpha. He's alpha. <laughs> so both our narcissistic, sociopathic yes. minds kind of clash, but never to a point where we're not friends. You know what right, I mean? Right. You know, I care about Matt. Matt cares about me. He's helped me. I've helped him. Right. You know, it goes both ways. And I'm sure he's sick of my shit. You know what <laughs> I mean? So, you know, it goes. But just as a comparison, you know, two fraudsters that do. He does shows with Matt. All, that's from Matt's. Um, that's, where, that's where that's from. That's, yeah. Yes. That's a. The only thing here, okay, here's a question for you both mm-hmm. of you guys. If you're, if you broke down on the side of the highway, do you think Matt, and he doesn't, Matt doesn't know you, would he just drive right past you? And of course. Last year he'd stop and help. Yeah. Of course. He'd just drive right past Of course. You. He would only stop if he knew you. <clears throat> or, he would or, only, or if it was a, like a Bentley or something maybe pulled off to the side, he might help that person. You know what I'm saying? If I don't think, I don't think he'd stop either way. I don't think, I think if he knew you, he'd stop. Yeah. He'd be like, holy shit, that's, that's Zach. I think he would stop he would, if he'd be like, that's Tommy. Like, eh, let me go back and stop. But you know, would he get up at three o'clock in the morning to come, to, to come help you? If he yeah. Yeah. Like if I call, if, if well, yes. you're closer to him, if you called him at 3 a.m., yes. would he come help you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't know because I don't, I don't live here. Yes. Well, yes. You know what I mean? He, he would, he would. Matt, Matt would, would take, he would take the time that he thinks you would take with him. He he does have compassion. He is about himself, but he does have enough compassion that he would, if if you needed him, he would he would come show up. In the right mood, I think. Yes. If he's in a bad mood, he ain't, he ain't no, coming. Hell no, hell no. Or his no. girls there, he ain't coming. Matt, That's true. Matt will be commenting on this video. <laughs> <laughs> but I love you, Matt. I love him. We, I, love, we, I, love, we all love you, Matt. Yeah. We love you. We're, we're just breaking balls. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, but he's a good guy, and again, he's helped me a lot oh, this whole sh- thing. He, he he's willing. He's willing to help every everybody to set up. This is his. This is his goal and dream now. This is what he wants going on. I told him, "Fuck the YouTube. That art is unbelievable." Oh my god! If he pushed it, that art the he, right way, he don't listen to me. Though. He 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 was just telling me today that art doesn't get a lot of views, but he gets a lot of people trying to buy it. I mean, he can't keep it. He can't keep it. Yeah. You know, but he said it doesn't get a lot of views, but he gets a lot of offers for purchase. He lowers the price. Gets a lot out there. Gets a reputation, puts the time into the art that he does the YouTube. The art blows the YouTube away. Yeah, it's money. It's money. He's very talented. Oh yeah, he's very he, and he's, he's gifted. Yeah. yeah. So as much as I'm hitting him, I'm also complimenting him yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. So now you're done with the AT and T. You get hit again at Wachovia, right? Right. Do another what? Six months or something? Six months. Some yeah. It was, it was some all, bid. It was like it ended up like I had to do all the bids I did. I think the longest I did in county was a year. So, I mean, I went in about five or six times. You know, my lawyer said it best at my federal hearing that I'm a consummate criminal. Like, I'm just, like, I'm, like, her describing my past is just like, dude, you're just going to do the same thing over and over again. You know what I'm saying? You're going to constantly steal and, and, and thief and, and all that stuff. So, 
she she described me as that and, and she was right because my whole mindset was I'm going to beat the system. You know what I'm saying? Re- regardless of the time, I'm going to beat the system. So their answer was to put me away for 15, 16 years to, to stop it. You know what I'm saying? But like in, in my, my view, like I'm going to beat the system. So the whole time I was away, I was doing legal work because I'm like, well, I'll, I don't get to attack the system financially. I get to attack it legally. Right. You know, so I'm, so now I get to argue crimes and, and what you've guys done. So. So now, like listening to you, I mean, you were, you were almost kind of doing what Matt was doing just in a different way. I mean, you were taking somebody's identity and getting a card. Yeah. He was taking identity and buying a house three times and leaving. We, so it's, we, it's we agreed. Similar. Matt and I agreed that had we met oh boy. prior to prison, that neither one of us would have went to prison. Uh, I don't believe it. you guys would have went to prison. It's just a matter of maybe not then. No, well, we, like, knowing the system, it, it's like we would have completely avoided it. We would have completely. Be, be, because the downfall, like, and we talk about this, because you're talking about people who pride themselves on getting around the system so the things that he knew right are things that i didn't know like matt was doing volume he was doing hundreds of thousands of dollars right and his deal was to get the money out of the bank he would go to the bank and withdraw it a couple of thousand dollars at a time whatever was unsuspicious enough for him to get it out so me i was doing very little the amounts I was doing were lower, like ten to fifteen grand, but I was able to get all fifteen to twenty grand out of the bank immediately. So that's that's what I'm saying. We we kind of agreed that had we gotten together, we'd have complimented each other enough that we would have we'd have made. Because look, I I doing ten to fifteen grand at a time, I was able to get over a million dollars. Doing his two hundred and fifty or three hundred thousand dollars he was doing at a time, he was able to get over. I think he owes like five million dollars. He was able to do like five million. I was able to do about two point five million. Yeah. You know, so it just—it's like we didn't coalesce where that we could combine ideas. Like, all right, so and it's just our—we might have been caught. You might have been right, but it was our perception when we met in prison that had we known each other, the compliments to each other's scheme. Would have like would have definitely went on longer. There's no doubt about that. Oh, that or or would have given us both enough money where we would have just walked away at some point. Yeah, walked away. Yeah. Or he would have like he said he might have turned himself. If he had three or four million dollars, like okay, I'll turn myself in, and when I get out, I have three or four million bucks. Right. You know what I'm saying? And instead of doing what he's doing over and over again and, and ending up getting caught. Yeah, and just waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Same yeah. same thing with me. It's like um, well, I probably would have never. I probably would have never been to federal prison. If I had known him beforehand, I probably would have never went to federal prison. Yeah. You know? but, well, you guys are both smart. To pull off the shit that you said, I mean, you can't sit there and say you're an idiot. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. So now so now you meet your second wife. Yes. And, and you have a daughter with her, right? Yes. Okay. So now take me through this Kellogg's thing, okay? Because <laughs> you attempted to steal $7 million from Kellogg's, but it kind of got fucked up. Right. Well, um, <laughs> believe it or not, funny or not, we were, um, my wife and I were home watching a movie one day. And <laughs> I'm sorry to cut you off, but when I hear about like these Kellogg stories and a guy had hacked, who the fuck did he, he hacked some big company. It always starts as like, well, you know, we were sitting and we were watching something, <laughs> right? I forget, yeah. there was a couple people. Well, that well, because ideas come. Watching Netflix. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ideas come out of nowhere. So tell me how the Kellogg's thing goes down, because this is good. All right, so we were sitting, my wife and I were sitting, just, just to give you the, the build up. My wife and I are sitting at home one day, we're watching television, and my brother calls me, oh. right? And my brother says, hey, he goes, go to channel such and such, right? And they're talking about fraud, something that you guys do. So we switch over to that channel, and there's a, a they're talking about a, um, not, I think I want to say Nicaragua, not Nicaraguan, um, like not Haitian, but there were there were um, these black people that were mastering in fraud in Houston, and what had happened was this girl was working for an oil company, and she received a check from one of the companies either buying oil or whatever, and she gave it to this guy, who started a company and opened up a bank account, and what happened was she got the check and she gave it to him. It was like a sixty five thousand dollar check. So he opened up a bank account, deposited a $65,000 check in the account, 
and got the money and they left. Well, they caught him, you know what I'm saying? Because he had a P.O. box and everything and he was the one that's going. So when my brother pointed this out to us, me and my wife were watching. So we watched this and we're sitting there when it's over, we kind of look at each other like, huh, hmm. Like we could do that. So what we did was we decided that we could get business checks and we will open up an account that's similar to the business name and deposit the business check into that account. So what had happened was a friend of ours said that he had a cousin that worked at Kellogg's. <laughs> she was in the main office of Kellogg's. So like we, the logistics office. Logistic office. Oh, shit. General Mills. Yeah, it was Kellogg's. It wasn't yeah. General Mills. It was Kellogg's. That's different from General Mills. Yeah. So she worked at, at Kellogg's, and I think this is in Michigan. She was in Michigan. I can't remember. Grand Rapids or something. So when we talked to her, she's like, oh, yeah, yeah. She says, like, the supermarket chains, they pay by regions. So a region for, let's give an example, because it was a Publix checks that we were after. So Publix by region would do all of Florida, all of Alabama, all of Georgia, all of Tennessee, and all of Mississippi. So when Publix orders from Kellogg's, they've covering, they're have covering they covering five states. So if Publix bought cereal from five for five states from Kellogg's, what would you imagine the check would be? Monthly. What do you think, Rob? Uh, five states, Kellogg's. How much is a box of Kellogg's? Then? Well, you're this, thinking about two bucks. This, but, I mean, this? this is Publix's price, so they're probably like so, yeah, they get a, about, about a dollar a box. This is back in the, in, in what, yeah, the what year? early 2000s, like 2005. Early 2000s. God. And you're asking monthly? What yeah, we monthly. They pay monthly. Seven, About $7 million, $7.8 million. God damn. That's what monthly. 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 Okay. So oh. Kellogg sends a check. This to, is in the 90s. This is in, no, this is in the 2000s, 2005. 2005. Okay. So she's telling me, the, the girl I call, she's telling me like, hey, so Kellogg's is, uh, Kellogg. So Publix's check is like $7.8 million. Um, when dixies check is like five point six. She's giving me the options of grocery stores, right, that are buying cereal. And she's telling me the biggest check is Publix. So I'm like, okay, I want a Publix. So what happens is she works in receiving where she sees the check and she processes it. So I'm telling her, okay, what's going to happen is I'm going to start a company called Kellogg's Distribution. <laughs> I'm going to open up a bank account under Kellogg's Distribution. And when you get that $7 million check, you're going to give me that check payable to Kellogg's and I'm going to deposit it in my distribution account. And once it clears, I'm going to withdraw the money I'm going to give you $3 million, and I'm going to take $4 million and change. Okay, so let me get this right from fine, right? So you got to grow on the inside of Kellogg's, yes. right? She's going to take that check that's supposed to go to Kellogg's and, and write it to you because you won't open up. No, she's not going to write it. She's going to give it to me. She's going to give it to you. Yes. And then so you're Publix, wrote, yeah, Publix wrote Kellogg's a check. Mm -hmm. Publix is like, okay, thank you for all those cereal boxes. Here's $7 million plus. So then they send the check to Kellogg's. She gets the check every month, so she sees it. So every month she takes it, she processes it, and puts it in. So what's going to happen is one month she's going to get the check and she's going to bring it to me. She's going to stick it in her shoe and bring it out and give it to me. So Kellogg's is not going to get the check one month, right? So what will happen is Kellogg's, Publix will go 30 days in the negative. So Kellogg's, Publix will be paying behind, right? So it's going to blend in. But at some point they're going to catch it. So she's going to give me that check. When she gives me that check, I'm going to deposit it in my account, which was um, Bank of America, right? Because the check is off of Bank of America. So Bank of America is going to clear that check immediately, and I'm going to withdraw those funds and give her her $3 million, and we're going to keep three plus, four plus whatever million, and we're all going to disappear into the moonlight. <laughs> and how'd that work out? Well, what happened was, there was a lot of complications because the girl was a friend of somebody we knew that was in prison. So when I talked to her, well, cause we met her in person, I said, okay, once you give me the check, go ahead and put in your two weeks notice. And she didn't want to quit. So like there was problems. We never pulled it off because I think we ended up going to jail, federal prison for this before we able, were able to do it. But I debated cause I wasn't going to do it. I think I waited like two extra months because initially I wasn't going to do it because she wouldn't quit. Had she quitted, had she quit, I would have probably done it. 
But she's like, I don't want to quit my job. So I'm trying to tell her, listen, one day, right, when when they notice that check's missing or that check got cashed or whatever the situation is, they're going to call everybody in. And when they question you, right, they can arrest you. And that's what I'm telling you. You might get arrested. I don't tell her that I've met you in person, right, and you can describe me to them, and I don't want that to happen. I would prefer that you quit your job, and if they call you and ask you to come in, you we can pay for you a lawyer, and you can say, I'm not coming to answer any questions. My lawyer will answer any questions, you, and you completely cock block them, and it's over. Right. You know, but she's like, I don't want to quit. But you're offer you're willing to give her three million out of the yes. seven point six. Yes. And she don't want to take the she, quit million to fucking leave a uh a, a job. Six, what is Listen, she making? Eight she, hours an she hour? was making seven thirty five per hour. And you're offering her three million to quit? Yes. She, need, like, she needs a therapist. <laughs> she's like, oh, I don't oh, fuck. Well what would I do all day? Who gives you a got three fuck? fucking million? Go somewhere. <laughs> yeah. How about getting you a man, bitch? You know what I'm saying? It's like it was it was insane. Do you believe that shit? She won't quit a fucking. I, I she's making seven thirty five. He's offering three million. So so wait. So if she does, if she quits, right? She goes. She goes. She leaves. She leaves. They figure out that we were never. We never paid Kellogg's. We paid somebody else. Somebody right. Check out thing. They go right well, after her though, don't well, they? Don't they say like that's I? Like I study one. right. And and here to answer your question, I had studied law, and I realized that what happens is when you're employed at a company, right. They can call you in and the company can say at that point, charge them. Right. But if you don't work for that company, then you can lawyer up and you never have to come in and answer questions. If you're on their payroll, you have to answer questions. If you refuse to answer questions, they can actually have you arrested for suspicion. Mm -hmm. The company can say, I feel like they the company can say, I want to press charges against her because she's not doing this and they can have you detained. In, in my mind, her getting detained meant they were going to squeak because she had kids. She had like oh, two yeah. young she's kids. Gonna talk. Yeah, so she's going to talk. This guy looked like this. My cousin who's in prison knew who he was. Like she was going to lead them on the trail back to me. Of course. You know, and, and that's why I'm telling you, you need to quit because if they ever call you to come in, then I will pay for an attorney to say, my client's not coming in to talk to you. What do you want? And am I correct? If she would have quit, the only thing that they could file would have been a complaint. Correct. They wouldn't have been able to question her, period. Right. So she doesn't have to answer, like, did you ever see right. the public's check? Right, because it would be filed as a complaint. She lawyers up. Lawyer says, fuck you. Yeah. And that's yeah. pretty pretty much whatever you think you have is what you got, and that's as far as it's going to go. And it wouldn't go further. Whereas if you're answering questions, <laughs> God knows what you'll say, then they're going to put you in cuffs because the company's going to say, we feel like she did something wrong or she took something from us, you know, and then they put you in cuffs and they might arrest you for something different. You know what I'm saying? Like whatever the company wants to charge you with and then you testify, it just it just becomes a mess. It's like get the fuck out of there. Right. So we can cash this check and get our money and go. Ugh. I don't want to leave. And that's unbelievable to me because he, again, here's a woman making 735. She's already broke the fucking law. Mm. Right? Yeah, like yeah. she's she's taking the check or Stating, I'll take the check, yes. put it in the shoe, and hand it to you. So yes. she's already fucked. Yes. So, so at this point, you're fucked. Either way, you're fucked. Yes. So at least try to not get right. fucked. Right. So once we get the money, I'll have a three million, leave your job. I'm telling her, once the money clears, put in your two weeks. I'm like, you don't have to quit immediately. Put Wait in your two weeks. Wait till you get the three million. Yeah. Man. Put in your notice ah, and leave. Oh, I don't. I, you know, I'm like, dude, you could go back. <laughs> I, after three years, you can. Spend two million or spend one million, live life for a year, and then go back. What was it with the Kellogg's? So what are they? Yeah. Well, they're giving me free cereal. Like I don't fucking know what her the in the back or what? <laughs> I mean, so what? So then, what does she bring you down? Because uh, they get her. Well, quit, but, right? in, in my mind, she she made the pathway to bringing me down. So I so like let's say that she was supposed to give me the check in in January. The fact that she wouldn't quit, I'm like, okay, I don't want the January check. Let me get the March check because what's going to happen is I need to make plans to, to vanish off of your radar because if they call you in, I have to, in my mind, tell myself that you're going to talk. 
and you're going to tell them about your brother who knows me, your cousin that knows me, and he's going to say, oh, I know that guy. He was in jail with a friend. Like, I, I have to uh, assume that the pathway to me is going to be set. Guaranteed. And you're, you're going to, yeah, you're going to go to jail because you're not going to be able to explain $3 million. Like, I'm not going to coddle you, coddle you. I'm going to say, here's $3 million in your bank account. Never speak to me again. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and when they see you have $3 million, like, okay, well, fuck, somebody took $7 million. Well, let's run everybody. Well, damn, this bitch has a new Maserati. Let's see what's up. <laughs> no, nah, bitch, you go to the Dominican Republic for a year, hang out, buy a house for thirty grand. that's beautiful, live in a high-end Dominican. Are, are, yes, or? you quit and you go somewhere before they even realize yeah. the check is gone. Fuck yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. She didn't want to do it. She absolutely refused. And I'm, I'm thinking, like, me and my wife are looking at each other, like, when we're talking, they're like, what? like $3 million. <laughs> I'm telling her, blow $1 million. Yeah. Take a year, quit for a year and just blow a million dollars. You know what I'm saying, Rob? Because she's already she's already broke the law. You know what I mean? At, at this point, what the fuck? That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Like, just, <laughs> well, her thing. What, what do I do all day? <laughs> I could find a lot of things to do all day. <laughs> How about hire you a gigolo to fuck you? Uh, <laughs> for real? You know, what? You know anything? Yeah. Just have a fuck about, fest for you. Yeah. How about travel? Yeah. How about go places with your kids? Oh, but but stay but, home. But I Isaac slash. Slash Zach slash whatever other seventeen names you probably go under. If she can you donate know. to charity if she feels good. She can yeah, donate, donate to charity. To charity. Yeah, thank you. you Just go. quit. Just fucking quit, bitch. I'm not quitting. <laughs> I don't want to quit. I like my job. Well, then don't steal the fucking check, shit, dummy. <laughs> Tell me who else will steal the check. Yeah. Okay. You don't want to quit. Can you refer me? <laughs> <laughs> can I get a referral? Yeah. Please. Please. <laughs> That, that was the situation. So okay, so that gets all fucked up, obviously. Well, yeah, because what happened was I postponed it for two months because I I wanted to. So in my mind, like, okay, I still want the money and I'll still give you the money, but I need to plan a way to absolutely vanish from your site. So now whatever you tell them leads to nothing. So, you, you, so what did you do from there? So I started planning, like, disconnecting from her cousin Hey, I want you to talk to, like, I hired somebody. Like, I'm going to pay you to talk to her cousin. You know what I'm saying? I, like, I'm not going to talk to him anymore. Hey, I got a, I got somebody that I'm paying that's going to be handling such and such. Make sure you get your money. Hey, I decided that, you know, I don't, this is not really my scam. You know, like, I, I was paying somebody. So I have a, a, a guy, let's say his name is Carlos. So I, I say, okay, Carlos, I'm going to give you, like, 10 grand. And when this goes through, I'm going to give you 100 grand. You are now the contact person for them. So I go and tell them that I'm no longer putting this together. I'm just a middleman. Here is the big guy. So you're layering yourself. <laughs> right. You're doing. Yes. Yeah. So that that's why I put it off. And then I ended up going to jail, which is why I didn't get it. You never got it. No, because she, she didn't quit. So I ended up like, okay, so let me vanish and give them a fall guy. It's really not a fall guy. I mean, I'll give you 100 bands. And, you know, you go and do whatever you do with it. I don't give a fuck. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I want them to say, well, I think it was that guy. Not you. Yeah, not me. Right. You know, he had a middle guy that was bald. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, that that was my plan. That's why I didn't end up getting the money because I postponed it. So then after Kellogg's, that, that falls through. You're not hit yet. No. Right. So now what happens after the attempted uh, Kellogg's deal? Um. Well, you know, like the, the hustle that I had was – kind of like screwing the bank out of money for their claims department. You know, if someone unauthorized uses your debit card or credit card, the bank has to give you the money back. So that was kind of my my hustle. So I would like have people open accounts in different people's names. I'd put like five grand in the account and then I'd have someone in a completely different state. This is when I could clone the cards mm -hmm. to steal the money out of your account. And then when the bank gave it back, you know what I'm saying? I just kind of paid you off on that. How are you cloning the cars? Did you have one of those machines? Yeah, one of the little machines. Like Boziak had? Yeah, like yeah. Same type of shit? Yeah. And all I would do is clone the card, and then I'd send people to buy money, postal money orders, or grocery store money orders with the debit card. And then you'd be like, oh my. Like, you'd be in Ohio. You'd open up an account. I'd go in the bank with you, open up an account. I like to open up an account. I have $5,000 I want to put in the account. Cool. Then when the debit card comes in the mail, you know, I clone the card. I have you go to the I go to the gas station, use the card, and then my friend in Georgia is using your card. So I go back in the bank and go, hey, 
I'm getting transactions out of Georgia. So you pull up my account, and as you're looking at my account, someone just takes money out of my account in Georgia. They're giving you the money back, so you're taking five and getting ten. Yeah. Right? (laughs) Pretty much. And then that's how it was going. To the tune of about almost $2 million. Damn. Yeah. So that's that was the hustle I was doing when they brought that seven million dollar hustle. I'm like, oh my God, that's that's retirement. You know, I'm I'm gonna buy I'm my goal was to get a franchise with a Domino's pizza. You know, so that was my goal. That when I ended up doing that. But my goal was to get out of the criminal business because my wife was pregnant. You know, and we just had our daughter. So I'm like, I'm gonna get out of this and be done. So four million bucks, oh my God, it's beautiful. What did they want then for a uh, Domino's franchise? Um, a hundred and thirteen thousand liquid, right? Liquid, and then assets. Um, yeah, I had I owned like three properties, so I so had you could to, put them as the yeah, assets. As yeah. the asset, yeah, I qualified and and, and you got it, and I got you it. You ended up to open up a Domino's. Open no, up a Domino's in in um in um Durango, Colorado. Now, how was that to run? Was that a real pain in the ass or an no, easy franchise? No, I, I loved it. Did I you really? It. Well, I had a ton of <laughs> – when you have a ton of money and you, you get into a franchise and you have a lot of money, then you can do your franchise different from someone that's just starting up the franchise. You're able to give out a lot of more at the beginning. You're able to br- – you know what I'm saying? Your grand opening is, is much better. You give away free food. You know what I'm saying? It's just you're, – you're, you're sponsoring different high schools and stuff. So you make it to where you've gotten foot traffic. The beautiful thing about franchises is they line up and they lay out every benefit. They tell you how much money you can make. They pick you a proper area. They kind of know what you should charge. They give you your suppliers. They extend you your line of credit. They just they, they give you a, a format on a successful business. So all you basically do is just kind of plug into it. Now, and, and they gave you... They gave the the franchise to you in your name with no. with a record. No. They oh, okay, they so you had to put it in your wife's name, I assume. What? No, my wife had a record too. Somebody's so. name. Yes. <laughs> you got to put it in somebody else's. Name. Yes. Okay, but you were running it. Yeah, and, I was running and then it. Giving him a kick. Right. Whoever you had to do it. Okay. So you're doing that, and now because you have the capital from the other shit, like you said, you can get traction right away because you can afford a billboard. You can oh, yeah. afford a free, commercial. free, yeah, free pizzas. Uh, our grand opening. Everybody gets a free medium pizza. Yeah, limited, limited two per customer. Did you have a line out the door? What? <laughs> what? And immediately right after that, then it's constant people coming in because they're telling everybody else. Yes, right. Yes, cheerleaders get free pizzas. You oh. know, the, the high school all cheerleaders get free pizza. So if the cheerleaders are coming, guess who else is coming? <laughs> yeah, you know. So hey, you but, girls get all free the football pizza. players. Yeah, all the football, yeah, yeah, like they get free pizzas. What do we get? So now, so now when when I get. You know, I I understand it's not now, but back then, if I get a large Domino's pizza plane, you what does it cost you? About ninety cents. Ninety cents, and then I'm paying what nine ninety nine or something. Sixteen dollars. Sixteen dollars. Sixteen. Yeah. Okay, so the profit margin then is safe. Let's just say to make it huge. Fourteen dollars per pizza. Yeah, includes labor. It includes the 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 the, the, the you know the dough is about this big. When yeah. It starts off, and for the thin crust and the thick crust is about that big. So I mean, it's just the money is unbelievable. Now, how much on that do you have to kick to Domino's? Uh, Domino's get a pro- they only get a percentage of profit, and I think it was like fifteen percent of profit. That's low. I know that's not bad. That's not bad. You know, I looked at a McDonald's back in the day. They wanted a million liquid, yes, a million assets, and fucking thirty five percent of the fucking net. Yeah, of the profit net. net. Yeah. N E T. Yeah, M- Millie's uncle looked at a uh, McDonald's. <clears throat> that was his retirement plan. McDonald's, and then uh. I want to say like a Chick Fil A. Oh, I didn't even that, think Chick Fil A was franchise. I, I thought they were all yeah, corporate. No, I think you. I, I know McDonald's definitely. Maybe I'm wrong with Chick Fil A, but I know he. Yeah, Chick Fil A is only. Uh, he he doesn't care what your background is. I looked into that one too. He doesn't. You, no, he doesn't care. It, you, but you got to be a Christian. Well, like heavy. Christian. If you're not a Christian, I'd switch to being a Christian because Chick Fil A. <laughs> They're killing it, man. You can fl- you can flodge that easy. So after uh, the McDonald thing. You know, they want a million and a million in assets both. A hundred million. Was it a million and a million? It was a shit ton. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't a hundred million, I promise you. <laughs> no, I think I think it was a million and yeah. a million in assets, background check, the, the whole nine. Right. I mean, they're thick. And 35%, like I was telling you. And then I went uh, to the Polo, how do you say it? Tropicana? Tropicana. Sure, Tropicana. I had meetings with them, yeah. Yeah. And they were 300 liquid, 300 assets, and 45 fucking percent of the profit. Just the profit. Just the profit. It's better if, wow, that's almost half. 
Yeah. Wow. It's better if it's just the profit because at least they allow the net is ridiculous. That's how many, but but if you hit a McDonald's, oh McDonald's, you're not going to lose. But no, no, you're going to listen. Any of those franchises, you're going to make money. Yeah, you're going to like Domino's is telling me. You know what's funny is when I got into Domino's, this was 2007, early 2000. Well, I I got it in in the end of like like October 2006. I went to prison. I got arrested in April of 2007. So we had about seven months. But in the middle, when I got into Domino's, the the own, we met with the when because you know you have to fly out to the little corporate yeah. office when you're really serious. Mm-hmm. So the owner of Domino's or the the CEO said, "You're getting in at the right time because I'm going to change this whole company around." He says that we've been voted the worst. This is what this guy told me. Like we're sitting there and he's like, "We've been voted the worst pizza in America." I look at my wife like, "What the? Like, who wants to be part of the worst? Papa John was the best pizza." He said, you guys are getting in at the right time because I'm about to turn our whole organization around. And they did. And they did. He said, in three years, we will be the number one pizza place in America. Again, for the he said for the third time. He or, said, we fell the Pizza Hut, and then we fell the Papa John's, but we're going to come back and be the number one. Hey, you know, Pizza Hut fell off the fucking map. Oh, yeah, they did. All of them. Pizza Hut's my favorite by far, but Dom- I, I love the Domino's buffet. is good again. Uh, yes. Domino's, Domino's. Yes, is good. he he changed the pizza recipe. Good and he, and the he, inside, right? Yes, he yeah. bought in some younger um, advertising firm, and like when I watched it, like the whole time I was in prison, I'm watching it, going, "Oh my god, he's right." Because even when we started, even though they were bad, I was still doing okay. But had I not went to prison, I would have made a mint because he did turn that franchise around. A lot of hip and cool advertising. He he's the first one to do an app, the Domino's app. I mean, he was he was ahead of everything when it came to Domino's. Yeah, when you order now, there's a timer. Track it. Yeah. And if it doesn't get there in that time that they tell you, it's yes. free. Yes. yes. I've gotten a couple free. I, I hope every fucking time that I mean I got ten bucks, but <laughs> you know what I mean? I hope every time. Come on, fucker. Oh, yeah. Dom- hit, hit a fucking is- hit a fucking train, please. But, but even the t- the taste got better. The sauce is yeah. better. The yes. is better. Yeah, the gravy's and better I'll on that. I'll tell you what, Papa John's no. Oh, they're gone. Ugh. You know what they did? I'll Ugh. tell you what they did. They put too much fucking cheese on the motherfucker. Mm. That's what happened. Mm. Ugh. Domino's is good now. I like Domino's. And I like I like to try to beat them on the delivery. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a place over here they get the water shipped in from New York. Uh-huh. And, and you know as a pizza restaurant basically thing, the water that goes in that dough is everything. Oh, yeah. So there's people over here that, that I know from New York. It's called Mama Mia's. Mama Mia, yeah. And it is the best. Pe- you won't find better pizza in Florida than over there. Because they, they get they get the, the Mack truck to come with the water from New York, and that's how they make their dough. So, you know, like in New York or New Jersey or Philly, when you get a slice of pizza, there's all that white like dough shit. Like when you pick it up, your hand's white with like powder. Yeah. And that's how you know that they're using – uh, water from up north or from the east, you know, Pennsylvania, Jersey, New York. There is no comparison from that right over here on the beach, on Lake Worth Beach, which is right over here. It's called Mama Mia's. They're from New York. I know them really well, and they they get it all shipped in, and they're not like out the ass or anything. They're just like you know a little bit like a yeah. you know fifty cents more or something. But they're like the up north. Uh, pizza where you get a big ass slice where they got to flip the end of it. Right. You know what I mean? Like the real Italian shit. Right. You know, oh, it's fucking bad. <laughs> you, you gain 40 pounds of that motherfucker. Whew. So you do that. Okay. So now you you got seven months out of that. And what the reason why that went, that ended was because you got in trouble. The dominoes. The dominoes. The, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I got arrested. That that happened to the, the seven million. Mm-hmm. I mean, my arrest was very. The most untimely thing in the world. My daughter is two months, three months old. Mm. She's born in January. We get arrested. She's like four months old. Our daughter's like that arrest was was horrific. Mm. It was horrific. It was for something that actually happened the year. No, it happened earlier in that year. So, yeah, my arrest was horrific. It was the most worst time thing in the world. Okay, so so take me from here. You're you have the Domino's franchise and then take me to the rest. Like what happens? Uh, what do you mean? Um, oh, okay, oh, they, so- they they didn't know about it, right? And and kind of what happened to me was when when I got arrested, you know, they threatened to take our daughter away. So my wife kind of told them everything we were kind of doing. 
But I, I mean, you know, like when when they raid you and shit, you wake up Thursday out of nowhere and they're there. That, well, no, they got me getting off an airplane, so oh, they really wow. they never got any evidence. Oh. You know what I'm saying? My wife just kind of like said, "Okay, yeah, we did this, we did this, we did this," and that's what they used to get warrants. So they didn't they didn't really have any evidence. But you know, the feds don't need evidence. They they, they do whatever they, they want. do conspiracy, and they're like, "Okay, well, this person said you were doing this." So we're going to count that as evidence. Did you know that your wife had told him? Um, yeah, he, he told me that. He said, you might as well, because, you know, he questioned her first. And he goes, you might as well confess. Your wife already told me everything. So I said, well, then why do you want to hear it from me? Did she actually tell him everything? Yeah. she probably. They, they weren't playing you? No. Nah. Okay. So, but I mean, it, it's, I mean, you know, they threatened to take the kids. So I'm not, I'm not nah, upset about it. you can't hate on that. You know, so I'm, I'm not upset about it. You know. It's one of those things where you know you do it, you you do this crime, you do the time. You know what the what the hell? Now, now, how do they label you as a leader of an international fraud ring? <laughs> like, how how do you even get that label? I don't know how they got international. That's what, that's what fucked me up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know whether, but you know they, you know, a, an arrest like that, they want to make themselves look bigger. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We might have been a national because we had been to like different multiple states. But we weren't international, you know. I'm saying I didn't go out of state. Yeah, right there. That's the one, right? Yes. Zach, okay. Can you read that, Rob? You're a better reader than me. Sentence, yeah. I, I, the Government morning. identity froster, fraudsters to do time. U.S. District Judge James D. Whittemore sentenced Isaac Allen to more than 16 years in jail Tuesday for bank fraud and identity theft. Last week, the judge sentenced one of Allen's co-conspirators, Tara Pasco, to 87 months in jail. Allen and Pasco, along with other members of their ring, defrauded a series of banks locally, including Fifth Third Bank, BB&T, Bank of America, and other financial institutions by stealing names, social security numbers, and other personnel, identifying information of individuals, and then posing as these persons to obtain credit cards and credit lines from these financial institutions. Pasco and Allen then used the credit cards, drew down the credit lines, and absconded when payment was due, the government said. They obtained more than 150000 through this scheme. Special agents of the SBI, FBI and an inspector from the U.S. Postal Inspection Service investigated. Assistant U.S. Attorney Robert Mozakowski prosecuted the case. Allen pleaded guilty to the charges of false statements to a bank and identity theft on September 13th. A release from the U.S. Attorney's Office said Pasco pleaded guilty to bank fraud and identity theft charges on August. October 4th. Pasco was your wife? Yes. <clears throat> she got 87 months? She got 87 months. And you got, what, 16? I got 198 months, <laughs> which is uh, more than double. <laughs> what, what What were your, your uh, guidelines? Do you remember? Um. Yeah, they came up to like 237. You know, they gave me a four-level a leader. It, it, it's a four-level leadership role. You know, you know, every, you know what's funny is um, I'm dating a, a school teacher who, you know, off off of an app and who looked me up and told me, she goes, I don't understand why you got that much time for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of theft. Is that what was on your indictment? One fifty? One fifty. And they gave you that much time? They gave me that much time. God damn. I've never seen that. <laughs> it's it's um I think it's you know, my wife is is white, so I think it's uh, you know, like, hey, you're a black guy, you took advantage of this white lady. Yeah. So we're gonna put you away for sixteen years. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. You know, so like I I don't understand that much time for that kind of loss. It's not even a lot of loss. No, no. I, I've never seen that. That's crazy. That's <laughs> you crazy. Know, he used to work in the news, so he would do all the big stories for Fox and Philly and NBC and Philly. Did you ever see anybody get anything close to that? He did it for ten years. He was at all the spots with like the big old school. Like before you went in, you know, you had the heavy ass fucking cameras. Yes, yes. Yeah, the guy, the guys falling into the courtroom. That would be me with the camera and the reporter there with the thing. Yeah. He's got the microphone trying to get a fucking question yeah. and shit. Uh, the biggest one I saw still to this day is the judge, the kids for cash scheme, where judges sent kids away to. Uh, oh my god, uh, he did that story. So, uh, so the judge, uh, the head guy, Mark Chavarella, is thirty six years in prison. And then his other judge uh, that was uh, responsible for doing it got 16 years. So now, and the 16 year is out because of COVID. He's on. Uh, so what, how much did he actually do? He might have only done eight years or nine. Or he got seven 16 years. Year. How many people he sentenced? So, so what they did was uh, they sentenced kids. Like, so your your son was on school property and he got caught smoking a cigarette. So this judge, and he played it well with the parents. He's like, we're going to teach him a lesson so he never does that again. And the parents would be like, yeah, you're right. I don't want my kids smoking cigarettes on school property. So they'd be like, you got it, judge. Do what you have to do. So you would think a kid smoking cigarettes on school property a couple weeks in the juvie or the whatever the center. Well, no, the kids would get a year. 
a year. A year, and then the parents would come back and be like, whoa, 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 we didn't, we didn't want a year. Uh, you know, two months would have been fine, or two weeks would have been fine. Oh, I'm sorry. They never had legal representation. He was able to just boom, boom, put him in a, in a juvenile detention center that his buddy built. So all the kickbacks that kept coming. Oh, my and God. Coming and coming. So he got the 36. The other guy got 16, I think it was. And I still think the guy who got the 16 was the head. Was guy. actually the New head. He but just he, had a better lawyer. He had, he had connections. Yeah, he had. Now the guy that got sixteen. Where was Rob, this though? Where was this? Uh, Northeast Pennsylvania, Scranton, Wilkesbury area. Oh wow! Now the guy that got sixteen. What was his like actual charge? Do you remember? I, I can look it up on the thing. I'm not sure exactly. What yeah, just to, charge, just because he got yeah. sixteen. So I'll, I'll look it up. So you know, while he's looking that up, here you go. I mean, this has got to piss you off. Here you go. You have a fucking judge putting little kids away for a year. Right. Specifically, kids. <clears throat> many kids, specifically to a specific juvie jail to get that kickbacks. is owned by his partner to get kickbacks. And then one guy gets 36, the other guy gets 16, but only does eight and gets out on COVID. This is kids ruining kids' lives. Yes. When you, he has a video. And the mom screaming, "You killed my kid!" What the fucking kid killed himself? So yes, yeah, yeah. The kid winded up uh, committing suicide, and so Chivarell is. The I head, remember that. Chivarell is the head judge. He's co- he just got found. Uh, he just got found guilty. So and he's now, coming out of the courtroom. He's coming out, of, and he's standing there. We're I'm there with the camera, right? We're there, and the reporters interview him. And literally, it was one of those scenes where you're like, even me behind the camera, my mouth just dropped because we're interviewing his lawyer. You know, we're gonna fight this, and we're you know we're not done with this yet. And all of a sudden, this lady out of nowhere is screaming, like, bro. And she's standing right here, and he's right here. And she goes, you remember me? You remember me? And he turns his head very slowly, and he makes eye contact with her. And she's like, "You, my kid's dead because of you. He put a bullet in his heart. And it was one of those, like, whoa, raw emotion. And he didn't say anything. He just looked at her, and he turned his head back. Wow. Yo, Zach, and he's, in the, ba- that, he's he? in the background. You got that video on your phone? Uh, yeah, I have to look for it. Oh, hey, fuck. I, you wasn't he the one that shit. said, you guys aren't, you're forgetting that the kids need, need to be held accountable for what they did? I, I think he did say something. Yes, like I, re- I remember reading that article where he's going, like, you guys are acting like you're forgetting about what the kids did. Yeah. These kids need to be held accountable for what they did. Sure, but not like, fucking what? A, a year for a cigarette. Yeah. And, and, and then you're getting a kickback from it, you <laughs> dirty fuck. So here's, here's the, uh, here's the, um, Thing. So, Kids for Cash scandal centered on juven- uh, judicial kickbacks to two judges of the Luzerne County Court of Common Pleas in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. Judge Mike Conahan and Mark Chivarella were convicted of accepted money in return for imposing harsh ad- adjunct uh, educations on juveniles to increase occupancy at the for-profit, for-profit, <laughs> for-profit defensive man. center. Chivarella disposed thousands of children to extended stays in youth centers for offenses as trivial as mocking an assistant principal on MySpace or trespassing in a vacant building. After a judge rejected an initial plea agreement in 2009, a federal federal grand jury returned a 48-count indictment. In 2010, Conahan pleaded guilty to one quarter count of racketeering conspiracy and was sentenced to 17 and a half years in federal prison. Chivarella opted to go to trial. He was convicted on 12 of 39 counts and sentenced to 28 years. So 28 wow. years for Chivarella. 17 for Conahan. Conahan's out right now, and he's he did, and he only did about eight. He's and the other guy only got to 28 years, probably because he went to trial. Yeah. He probably could have pled out to 16. Yeah. And you get 16 for 150k. That's insane, bro. <laughs> yeah, right. That's... They didn't like you. No, he didn't. He didn't at all. <clears throat> That's insane. <laughs> Maybe before we're done, we'll get, you got to see Rob with this fucking big ass camera. It's funny as shit. I can find it. Yeah. And yo, this woman's going crazy. Yes, I I saw all that. Yeah, I saw man. that because I remember like they were upset because the judge kept going. You guys keep forgetting that the kids need to be held accountable. Because he'd walk out of the courtroom and people are screaming. And it's like the balls. You got the balls to fucking say that. Yes, bro, you just killed somebody's fucking kid. There's the picture. Hold on, let me pull it up here. Sorry, guys. There's the picture. Yes, this is the lady right here. So let me go back. Yeah, that's the lady screaming. So at here's the lady. This is when she went nuts. I'm probably standing right off camera here. And well, with the camera off this picture here, and there's Chivarell. This is when he turns back. This is after she's screaming at him. This reporter I worked with right here, Joel Holden, he just literally just turned his head, microphones right there, and his mouth was dropped too because he was just in like utter and complete shock. Are you able to play it or no? It's just uh, we'll that's just still. Like it, but uh, again, let me see if I can see if there's a picture of me somewhere. Yeah. So when you see shit like that, it's like what the fuck. And then oh. I know a guy that all he was doing. It, it, it was sad to see. 
all he was doing, he, he was trying to provide for his family. He had a, a daughter or a son, young guy on the corner, selling crack, just trying to, you know, not a ringleader or anything like that. He's 18, no education, in the ghetto, selling crack to provide for his family. And they give him 26 years for 20 grams or something of, of crack. 26 fucking years. <laughs> And not a big time drug dealer, just that. But that's what the guidelines called for. You know, you can thank for that, <laughs> Clinton and Biden. No, Who? Obama. Obama with the yo, he's running the show right now. <laughs> he is. I, I, Clinton is the one because you know I remember when, in the nineties. I tell you, I was paying attention when identity theft came. Like I honestly remember reading an article in the USA Today. I used to get the. You know, one of those anyway, one of those perks in life, like, hey, I can afford <laughs> to USA. get the three hundred dollar USA Today at my step every morning. Yo, when I was able to get the Wall Street Journal, I was like, oh. yo, I'm the shit. I didn't even read the motherfucker, but and I just, just wanted to have it on my coffee table. That's right. That's today's bitch. That's today's bitch. Because you know, it just it makes it look like you're more than what you are. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'd open and try to read. I can't read this fucking. Oh, lingo. the tiny print. Give me the like, New York Post. It's like a thousand stories yeah. on one page. Yeah. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah, and it's like tiny ass print and complicated, yes, so yes. I so I couldn't read it. Yes. you know what I mean. But I'd have I it there even, to look good. I didn't order it for that reason. USA Today had pictures. See, I went with the New York Post. I thought oh, that was cool. cool. On the, on well, the that's a whole bunch of opinions anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. I used I used to read that too, but I got the USA Today, and I remember a picture of a prosecuting attorney that said that she was petitioning Congress and Bill Clinton <laughs> to change the financial crimes because the MCI. From 10 years to 30 years. Yeah. I remember thinking to myself, 30 years for financial crimes? Because they're privately owned. They're all, all the prisons around, every prison is privately owned. They're oh, yeah. all making money. We got more prisons in the United States than any other country. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Including because, China. Because we, because we love locking people. People steal money. It's not, you don't pay the money back. We want you to go to prison and, and, and pay the money, which is ridiculous. But Zach, the, it's all about the money. Yes. It's not about locking people up. It's the money because they're privately owned. They, every every federal prisoner costs 30, every single one costs 34000 per yeah. prisoner. We had somebody in, we looked it up. Uh, what is, is this the one? That's that's the one where he so said. There's there's a, as you can see, there's a. Sh- oh, there's Rob in the and back. There's a guy with a camera right behind that's him. That's, r- that's, that's him right there. Holding the camera. That's Rob. Uh, <laughs> with that big out. motherfucker. <laughs> you see that? Oh, wait, wait, wait. There's the picture right there. Of her screaming yeah, at that's it. That's what she was screaming at. This was yeah. him coming out one of the days. Look at him. He's all smiling. He's Click like, on that and see if you can make it bigger on visit. Just uh, see what it does. Uh, I'll get on blue. Make it pay. Or like a Just see if we can see you. fucking Mr. Rob. Yeah. Oh, fuck you. Pop ups. I remember that. I, what's funny is I like news stories hit me all the time. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's Rob right there with the orange. Yes. <laughs> Go Rob. <laughs> okay, Rob. You the, that's you the cameraman. That's Go Rob. Camera. And, I, and, I, and I actually got into a Netflix uh, documentary, which uh, I remember when these guys were there. Yeah, so there's Kids for Cash documentary. It's called Kids for Cash. And uh, there was a point when we're waiting downstairs. You're not allowed into a federal courtroom with cameras. So we're waiting downstairs for the verdict to come down. And we want to be the first on the air, right? The first to announce it that he got found guilty. And a reporter came running down the, the thing and he yelled out. And I just remember running with my camera, just running. And there were these guys with these big boom mics and they had their things. So in the Netflix documentary, I think you just hear me go, it's time, it's time, it's time. And I'm running with the camera like, yeah, I made it in the Netflix documentary. <laughs> well, that's cool, right? All right. Cool. Hey, hey, man, man right on, big I'll dog. At least, at least she got something out of the 12-hour right. day work. Yeah, right. for, no, for no pay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, well, you, you weren't freelance, though. You were um, payroll, right? Yeah, yeah, payroll. Okay. But still paid. Hey, hey free, freelance is... Yeah, yeah they, they can make it. Now, back then, when you were working... What was that? Fox or NBC? Oh, uh, that was for uh, NBC. What were they paying you, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, boy. Um, it's not like probably, you're going to So, probably my yearly salary... $35,000. Wow. Fuck you. You would not believe. No, I would have thought it would have been 60. <clears throat> and tell them the hours that you had to work. Like, they call it 2 o'clock. You'd have to get up out of bed yes. and fucking go. So, yeah, you'd have, you know, just breaking news, right? Breaking news. You got to get in. So, I could go in sometimes at 3 o'clock in the morning and work till 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Just For 30 top. fucking K a month, you know, a year. Then, then, of course, as I moved, it's it's like anything. You move up in the market and you get more and 
the higher the market you go, the more you get, and fuck that. But you know, it's too yeah. much, yeah. especially when you got well. Kids. You but but that's the foot in the door type of yeah. I had a um a buddy of mine from college. His name is Chris Wateki, and he is a, a set producer on on a movie What Dreams May Come. Oh yeah. But he's been in show business all his life. He kept telling when I got my first felony, he said it's about time for you to get into one business. It doesn't give a fuck about your record. Mm -hmm. And that show, he goes, you need to be a cameraman. He goes, granted, you can't go to the White House, but you can be a cameraman for any movie set. He told me on movie sets, the drugs and alcohol. Oh, yeah. The yeah. whores. Yeah. It, it, he goes, it's unbelievable. Yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. He, <laughs> what's funny is, he did reenactment, re, he directed reenactment for America's Most Wanted. This is a story I didn't even tell Matt. So he put me in two of those reenactments, reenactments, right? So that was his job. He's like, hey, I'm gonna fly you to, he was in San Francisco, I'm gonna fly you to San Francisco and we're gonna do a couple of reenactments. Now I did one, like one of my favorite was, there was a guy called the Knockout Bandit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, a, a guy going around robbing convenience stores where, of course, this is prior, this is in the 90s. Mm. So this is prior to the the cage, the the, um, the 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 plastic, what is that stuff called? The 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 hard plastic? Mm. It starts with a V. For what? Like, you know, when you go in a convenience store, those guys are in this big hard plastic. Like, like, like behind so somebody yeah, can't Yeah, it's like bulletproof. Um, like a polyglass. Or yeah, polyglass. Yeah. Plexiglass. Right? Plexiglass. Plexiglass. Plexiglass, I knew it. Yeah. All right. So this is before those days. So when you go in, they were like standing right there. So what he would do is he would ask them if they had change for a 20. And when they would open the cash register, he would like, when they press the button, open the cash register, he'd reach across the counter and knock them out. Like in one punch. Through the fucking plexiglass? No, 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 no. Oh, this, this is before, before the plexiglass. I'm sorry, I misunderstood it. So you're standing there and he'd say like, hey man, yeah. can I get change for this 20? So you open the register, boom! Big guy? Yes, big black guy. <laughs> uh -oh. He wanted me to play him. <laughs> so when I got there to San Francisco, there's a, a lot of stories behind this, but I'm going to focus on this one. When I got there, we're watching video of this guy. He's doing the reenactments for America's Most Wanted. So we're watching videos of this guy and we're busting out laughing because he's literally knocking people off scene. I'm like, holy fuck. So you're like, you know, you know, guy, help me find this guy, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that, yeah, the, the narrator. Yeah. yeah. Help us find this guy. He's a creep. So I'm acting. So we set it up and look, the studio where we produced it was about the size of this room. So he set up the convenience store, right? He had the dude in the harness. What I think is funny about it is because when the timing was, when he opened the drawer, before I could actually swing, he pulled the guy back. So it's like, oh, boom, a little too early. A little too early. Did you actually end up hitting him? No, I didn't hit him. It just, yeah. just that he pulled him back early. I know. I but was just seeing if you, you connected at all. Oh, no, no, no. Because uh, I, like, I was supposed to swing and he goes back. Even if I touched him, grazed him, he's supposed to go back so fast that he comes off the screen. So here's what's funny. This is when America's Most Wanted showed the face of the reenact the actors in the reenactment. Oh shit. They had to stop because I me myself <laughs> was one of the victims of the police being called on me. <laughs> <laughs> like the police are like <laughs> right. like um we think you're the knockout bandit. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> And you're like, um, I was in the reenactment. I'm not the actual person. Yeah. <laughs> did, so did that ever air? Yeah, it aired. It they, aired. they called the police. People called the police on me. Like, <laughs> oh my god, that guy lives next door. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, because you're saying to look out for this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they show me in the reenactment. Then they show the guy in a picture. People are like, fuck the picture. What about the knockout? That's funny. Because <laughs> they actually thought you knocked him out. Yes, they think I knocked him out. So they they got to call the cops on me. So I got the cops calling me like three times. <laughs> like the third time, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember you. All right, hey, it's a false alarm. <laughs> fuck. It was crazy. Did they pay you to do that? Absolutely. Back at that time, it was 500 bucks. I couldn't believe it. I ain't bad. He'd fly me out to San Francisco to do that. I did that, and there was another guy that killed... A uh, uh, car salesman. I was the car salesman that got killed. He was test driving a car, and the guy ended up shooting the car salesman. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And then you reenacted that. I reenacted that, but I at that time I got shot. You know, <laughs> you know. But um, my my friend Chris Ritecki, he he directed those things. One of the reasons he brought me out was because he was telling me that all I do is America's Most Wanted, right? He goes, you wouldn't believe. He was married to one of my close friends from college, but he's telling me you wouldn't believe the pussy I get just doing a reenactment for America's Most Wanted. Bitches will throw themselves like I just want to be on TV. He just, it's unbelievable. He, he's the one that bragged about show business. He was the one that was telling me the cameramen make about forty, fifty thousand. He said if you were freelance, you could make a hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand, where you just video something and then you sell it to the networks, because depending on what you got a copy of, how much would they pay? Uh, yeah, like that, TMZ will pay now. You get something good. And that was that was the thing years ago with TV. The guy I knew he used to he used to do on the side. He'd shoot stuff. And sell it to um, you know the TV stations, yes. but then what happened was nowadays, Twitter, right? Everybody shares stuff on social media. So these TV stations literally rip it off social media. Yes, and they're not supposed to, but they'll say oh, credit absolutely. credit John Smith, even though John Smith didn't give his credit. They saw it on social media and using it. And they snatched it from and they snatched they it. They don't have to pay them. They don't pay now. For I didn't get shit. Vice TV took my shit with they Roger didn't Stone. They didn't, they, she emailed me twice and we went back and forth. And next thing I know, it's when I turn on the TV and I'm like, fuck. And then I look at look it up on online. Like, it's on fucking YouTube, all over the place. I'd like to see those. There has to be something. Like if a lawyer got in there, I have to say, like, I didn't give them. Yes, is it on a platform? Correct. But I didn't give them permission to use it. And did they even give credit? Did they have no. credit courtesy no, they of? Didn't. No. That's bullshit. <clears throat> That's bullshit. I mean, it did help. It, it, did, yeah, it, sure. it boosted me like crazy. But sure. at the same time, nice to I say. mean, I wouldn't have even have really, I mean, I would have just said, well, look, I'll do it. But like long term, like give me three deals where you'll take cuts from my shit. Or you know still what I mean? would have been nice to have courtesy MSCS Media. And, yeah, I mean, just put and, my fucking a, name uh, out link. there, not just Amen. my head Amen. and Roger. Yeah, that's you know right. I mean? That's right. But <laughs> you know, I could have made a big stink about it, but it, it helped me anyway. You know, it boosted <laughs> the me up. Po popularity. I yeah. mean, what the hell? I mean, yeah. hey, negative press is good press. Now, had I been where I'm at now, and then do that, maybe it would be different. I, I would have said, hey. <laughs> you're gonna read. You're gonna. You're gonna put a little click to my shit in there. Amen. Amen. But at the time, fuck it. You know what, hey, what the hell? What you got to work your way up. Somehow. That's right. <laughs> so you, yeah, it's funny that you play for America's Most Wanted. That, oh my that, god! Yeah, I, I didn't even off. share that with Matt. I forgot about that. That was a he, while he, ago. That that those were like three. He he flew me to San Francisco three times. One was his wedding, and two was for reenactments. Re, I don't know why I can't say that reenactments. And um, I forgot about that. Those were like honors to me. Those were big honors. I was on my television moment. You know what I'm saying? And you got flown out for free. Yes, flown out for free and paid and pussy. He made sure that yeah. he, he brought in he somebody. Got pussy free. Too. Yes, he brought Shit. in somebody that was looking to get on the set. Like you're gonna have to fuck my friend. Oh, gladly. Okay, let's go. You know. <laughs> but see, you know what? That's the thing with what's his name. He got hit with fucking all the brawls. Which one was that? There's so many fucking shit. So much. The Hollywood guy. Yeah, he was a Hollywood uh, guy. Who? Not Epstein. The uh, white guy, the older guy. Oh, uh, what's, what's Weinstein? Weinstein. Weinstein. Yeah. Listen to me. Look, I'm sure he's the biggest dirt bag in the world, but they're all fucking doing it. Oh yeah. And the same goes same for fucking uh, Cosby. Cosby. Oh come on, man. And, and like they call him afterwards. Well, I called him because like, get the fuck out of here. <clears throat> I don't give a fuck what pill he gave you. He didn't make you call him. Listen to me. That that's like the thing that happened with Kobe Bryant when they said that he raped that girl. Yes. Kobe Bryant's at the top of his game. What girl isn't gonna let, let's just be honest. What girl isn't gonna fuck Kobe Bryant? Amen. What girl isn't gonna fuck Brad Pitt, Johnny Depp, George Clooney? What girl is actually gonna say What was the other one's name from um uh not Johnny um what's his name? Uh, Rob Lowe. Rob Lowe. Rob Lowe. Rob Lowe finally talked about that bullshit. Yeah. I saw him in an interview saying Matthew that, McConaughey. Yes. These what young girl bitches? is not gonna fuck him? Yes. You need you need now a paper before you before anything happens. Please sign here. Uh, or video record sa saying that it's okay. Like that's what it's come to anymore. Literally, think about contracts. What yeah. you have them contracts. De data de text it in your phone. Yeah. What well, did you see? Uh, another one just came out about Cosby because you know he got let out yeah. right yeah, yesterday or the other day. Uh, really? Somebody popped up out of nowhere and supposedly she was one of the first ones to come out. But well, wasn't really around during the trial, and now she popped up again. Shh. Now that he's out, that he did this and drugged her and whatever. And whether he did or he didn't, I'm sure he did to some of them, whatever it may be. But 
I'm not saying what he did was right, but that's at that time they were all doing it. I mean, you know, yeah. or I can majority. attest. I can attest for that because yeah. my friend Chris was telling me, like he let me listen to his voicemail, and just the propositions were very sexual on his voicemail. He's like, I have to delete this shit before I get home to my wife, who was my best friend. Yeah. And the problem is that that those those women, and again, there are, like you said, there are some out there I feel bad for. They got older. Probably did happen. Sure. They got older. But some of them <laughs> have some of them have nothing to lose, right? What are they? What? So why is there never? What I never you never hear about is, let's just say. Bill Cosby was wrongly accused by some women. I bet some of those women may are telling. Of tell course, them, I have but no some doubt. of those women maybe wrongly accused him. And let's say they figure out that he was wrongly accused. What happens to them? Nothing. 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 Right? Nothing. Nothing. Their life's not ruined. Their yeah, that, not ruined. that 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 um <clears throat> that Atlanta football player. Remember the one that got accused of of rape and he pled guilty. They made a movie about him. Mm. And then the girl came back and said, "Well, he never really raped me." You know, exactly. yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Oh, what was it? The, they made a movie about him. I have to look it up. Yeah, but I, I'll send that to you. But they made a movie about him. Um, she she said, you know, I know you never raped me. I just told them that. So then when they proved it in court, I think they gave her like like ten months in jail for doing that, for lying under oath in court. Like I'm sure Cosby's a piece of shit, right? But at that time, everybody was doing it, <laughs> and and yeah, I'm sure he drugged a couple of them, but it's not. Maybe like the first one or two right. didn't didn't know, but I'm sure after three or four, word got around. Hey, this is what Cosby does. So when you go, so in my opinion, when you go to meet him, you know you know him. that this is a this is a high possibility. And then when you take that meeting, yes, it's wrong. So I'm not saying what he did was right, but at the same time, you walked into that line of you fire. Put yourself in that situation. So how much do you bury him? You they, know, they completely buried him. They ended. it. Ended his his reruns of all of his shows, caused all his the people kickbacks. who worked on that show to Syndication. lose their kickback. Yeah, lose their kickbacks. And my thing with that is, again, you walked in there. Okay, so maybe the first fifteen they didn't know, right? But fifteen to thirty words around. Okay, I mean it has right. to be in Hollywood, and you go in there, and I would I would say nine out of ten women they're trying to get on with Bill Cosby. They they were doing it. So now they say. Well, we didn't want to come out about it, but you come out about it 30 years later. I was scared. I was scared. I was scared. You know women. You know women. I know women. You get a Puerto Rican, Cuban, Colombian, and I'm sure he's banged one of them. Oh, they ain't holding back. Amen. Am I right or am I wrong? You're right. You're right. Right? So then to come bury him because one comes out that maybe it really did happen, then you got 40 coming, maybe half are true. I'm not sticking up for the motherfucker. No, I mean, no. fuck him. Hey, you know, what he did was wrong and, you know, whatever. But I'm just saying it's kind of fucked up. It is. And they were all doing it. Yep. What did um the guy, what was the guy's name in House of Cards that got fucked and oh, ruined a great show? He's a little, um. What, oh, he was a kitty toucher. Kevin, though. House of Kevin Cards? <clears throat> great mo- great Sp- series. Oh, yes. Great series. You ever see that series? Kevin. No, oh, I never my. watched it, that show. It was banging until but, he had to leave. <laughs> what now, Was he a kitty toucher? I, yes, I told, teenagers. I told you the personal story that I know from him. I you know story. Kevin? You, oh, I don't know. Kevin. No, I don't know Kevin Spacey, but I won't name the person or the organization that I sure. worked for. He, uh, I forget. That. He was in town for a, a comedy show or a thing at the Improv, and so they used to bring them on to this place to talk about it for uh, uh, what do you call it? Like PR. Hey, this is happening this week, and yada yada. Well, so he gave uh, free tickets to some friends of mine. They go to the show. He hangs out with them afterwards. They go to a local bar, and they're having drinks and all that type of stuff. And uh, the one guy uh, that I know is is gay. And um, Kevin Spacey came over, like, near him, sat near him, and they were talking and talking and talking. And Kevin Spacey started rubbing his leg under the table. So he's, like, all, like, it's Kevin Spacey, but this is really weird. And he, like, what? just kept touching him in inappropriate ways and tried to run his hand up his... His his side of his leg. And when he was telling me this, like, he's a guy that's not going to lie about it. Um, And then not too long after that, stuff started coming up about Kevin Spacey. Yeah, being aggressively. I can't stick up from him in that one. But that show was bad. Did you watch that show, right? Yeah. I got to watch that show. I got to take a look at it. It sucks once he leaves. Blacklist is good. You ever see Blacklist? Oh, my God. I love that show. You ever see Blacklist? Beast. 
Love that Jeez. show, especially from the beginning. Yeah, it, it it had me until he went on trial. Mm -hmm. You know when he started going like I think it kind of lost it. Then it kind of lost. I stopped. I just didn't have time, I guess. But I, I stopped watching it when uh, she stabs him, and then you're waiting for series seven to come out. It's when he's dropped off somewhere and they throw him in a trunk and they stab him. The girl. Do you, do you remember that episode? No, I didn't see that much. It, it it was I don't know season six or something. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Back back to what's important. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so now they come, they get you, they send you to 16 years. Yes. Now, when you went into court, what did you think you were going to get? Um, I thought I was going to get, like, um, my lawyer, my $40,000 lawyer um, who sold me out um, made me think I was going to get about 20 years. Like, I, I didn't understand, like, there was a lot of problems with my PSI, but she didn't want to challenge any of it. And she was challenging me to challenging the information in my PSI. It's like, you're not going to challenge it. Like, she absolutely, re it was, it was, the whole thing was bizarre. The whole thing, the whole thing was bizarre. It was really a, a setup to help the, <laughs> it was a setup to, to help the, um, the prosecutor, because the prosecutor didn't do much. I think my lawyer did it and the judge did it. I think somehow the agent told the judge that I was a complete piece of shit and that I ruined my poor, pure white wife. And so <laughs> so he decided to slam me and give me 198 months. It sounds like you had a shithead lawyer. Oh, yeah. She was. I mean, Palm I... Laura Palmieri, yeah, she was horrible. She was oh. horrible. She's, a gar she's garbage. <clears throat> so, yeah. Dude. So she sold 40 grand. 40, 40 grand to get 16 years on a $150,000 loss. Never seen it. With, with, with three, with two victims. Two victims, $150,000 loss. And 16 and a half years. How much uh, was the victims financially? How much? It like, was, like, like, did you owe them or take from them? The, no, the, just the, I got loans in their names. Like how much in loans? Like um, me, per, my, mine was male, hers was female. So my male ones was probably about 20 grand. Her female ones was like about 90,000. So. so really, if they wanted to, they could say... 110 plus yeah. 150, yeah. so maybe two 260. But even nah, that, 100,000. It was only 100,000. Period. Period. So, so they upped it. So it wasn't even 150 yeah. what they were. No, they they with. went with in, intended loss. <laughs> it was. It, listen, it was a lot of. They stacked a lot of bullshit. They just. They really. They they over the the goal was to get me a lot of time. That was the goal. Right. So you you take irrelevant facts that weren't backed by any evidence. And, and the goal was to get me, the, and they got me the time. And then you didn't have anybody to fight for you, so no, you're fucked. I'm and, fucked. And reverting back to it, and you're black. Yeah, and I'm black. So, so that, I, I just took, be honest. I, I took a huge hit. Fucking right, you did. You know, and and I did all that time, and and I came back. He denied everything that was even possible, and I just I came back. So I mean, to if survive you had a that, good, if you had a good lawyer, you should have got maybe five. Maybe five. Maybe five. Maybe five. But one of the big issues. I with, could see five. I could one see of, one of the big five. issues was they depended a lot on what my wife told them. Mm -hmm. You know, because they grabbed us in an airport. We got arrested coming off an airplane in Tampa. So they really didn't have evidence. So what they really relied on is her telling them what I did. Did she testify you again? Did she testify? No, they. You? No, because what would happen is. Um, they didn't really have enough. I never got charged with a conspiracy. So she just kind of like gave them that information and they put it in the PSI. And my, my lawyer wouldn't challenge it. It was, it was horrible. It was horrible. So now when they come down, they hit you with the 16 years. Are you like, holy shit? Yes. Or you're prepared? No. I, I was like, holy shit, 198 months, 16 and a half years. Because, you know, when you hear that kind of number, you're not actually thinking you're going to get that, right? Um, I, I thought it was going to be more. Did it? But yeah. still, when you hear it in, like, well, my my lawyer was preparing me that the judge hated my guts and that I was about to get slammed. So you asked for a different fucking judge. You file motions. <laughs> your continuance. You oh, she was I mean? she was garbage. So like she's like you're facing twenty twenty five years. So I'm like holy shit. Your lawyer said this. Yes. On one hundred fifty k. Wow. Is she still practicing law? Of course she is. Of course she is. <laughs> they love her. <laughs> wow. so you give somebody 16, 16 years to the private prison? 
<laughs> she'll be a she'll be a she'll be a lawyer so, for the rest of her. So she'll get she, fucking retirement. Is she so, getting kickbacks? Mm. Oh, of course, gotta be. Mm. Is she? Mm. Yes. Is got to be. Mm. Got to be. Mm. So she's telling me about twenty years mm. that I need to drop some of my challenges, and I'm looking at twenty years. So I got a hundred and ninety eight months. Well, a lawyer told you to drop some of your challenges. Yes. Oh, to, in, to inaccurate information. She's like. It, look, look, it was horrible. Unbelievable. I paid her. I'm sticking up for you, by the yes. way. When, when I'm falling over here, I'm like, God. What, what, what county is this? Where is this at? Uh, um, Tampa. I paid her. Never going to Tampa. <laughs> I, I don't, don't like it out there anymore. Don't. I paid her. Wow. I paid her. Wow. What so. the fuck? <laughs> you would have been better off with a, um, what do you call it? Uh, Myself. The public defender. Public defender. Yes. I'll tell I you what. I would have my 40 grand. You know what? In those public defense, the federal, not the state, the federal public defenders are better than some 100,000, 150,000 lawyers. Yes. I know this for a fact because they're busting their ass to go private. Yes. So that they can charge that 50 minimum. Yes. They are beasts. Those fucking public defenders fight like yes. I've never seen. Yes. Good. Good. Yeah. So I, I paid. So I paid her... And, and got screwed. So the basically I want to say about the sentence, what happened was when I first got arrested, um, getting off that airplane, I didn't know what I was charged with. So like I was telling Matt, I had committed so many crimes, like each day, like I committed four or five felonies a day. So, and to get busted, I'm like, oh my God, like I could culminate, if they could put together three days of what I've done, like You're I'm fucked. I'm fucked. Yeah. So when he came up with the charge, like, okay, we got you on one person and we're talking about about thirty five, forty thousand dollars worth of loss. Like I busted out laughing, like ah! This is it. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes. <Yeah. laughs> Roll it. As a matter of fact, you know what's funny? I tried to plead guilty at my um what do they call it? Arraignment. Arraignment. Where yeah. they said you can either plead guilty or not guilty. I said, Well, I choose to plead guilty. Judge is like, um, um, you know, your lawyer's going to talk to you. Basically, the judge was wanting to tell me, like, you can't, even though I'm giving you the option to plead guilty or not guilty, you actually can't plead guilty. <laughs> they, they fucked you seven ways to something. Oh, that yeah, seven ways. Because I'm going, hey, uh, $30,000 worth of loss? Yes, let's roll it. Yes, me. Sign me up. Yes, right? yeah. yes. What, what I'm talking about, five, six, four, five years? Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. I'll take that, yeah, right? let's go. Because, like, you have no idea what I've done. <laughs> yeah, but then you realize, but then it went a different way. Yeah, it, it went. It, so they didn't allow me to do that. So it went a different way. So when I wanted that, and I'm laughing in the agent's face, and I'm looking at like two or three years after he gave me the 198 months, and I'm back. They take me back to the holding cell, and I'm sitting there with my head in my hands. The lawyer comes in. The lawyer, the agent comes in and says, huh, "Still think you're looking at two or three years?" Yeah. And I just looked up at him. I put my head back in my hands like this. You win. You got in my mind. I'm like, you got that. What are you going to do? Yeah. You're done now. I'm done. There's nobody can do anything. You could appeal. Yeah. I mean, but uh, you know, all that is a waste. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Unless you got like some monster, you know what I mean? But yeah. they, they, they had it out for you. Oh yeah. So you yeah. were done anyway. I, I was done. You probably could have had Johnny Cochran. <laughs> when they got it. No, I mean, really? Yeah. When they got it out for you like well, that because well, you would have went in front of the same judge. All right. You were there with Conrad Black, you know? Yeah. 200 and he, I think he paid like a hundred million for his, his legal team was like a hundred million dollars. Mm -hmm. And he's like, he kept saying, I, I can't get justice with a hundred million. Mm -hmm. Like what makes you think you're going to get any justice? You see that? Conrad Black, he spent over a hundred million and they just had their mind made up and it, it didn't matter what you did, what lawyer you, and that's how it is in that federal system. Well, it, it really, it's Tampa. You know, Tampa's the worst district yes they could they could pick someone from overseas in san diego and they will fly all of the overseas stuff to tampa because they say tampa is the worst like that's the most corrupt area fly them to the most corrupt area so we can prosecute them which is tampa you might want to move yes i mean i mean not because you're doing anything because you're a target now forever oh, you know yes. that yes any little thing you you jaywalk you're gonna get hit with something <laughs> They're yep. watching you, man. Oh, yes. Yes, big time. Don't forget that. Yes, sir. Yeah, That's what everyone told me. That's what everyone told me. So the first jail you go to is where? Um, so you get sentenced. I assume they don't give you prison. Oh, they sent, me to, they sent me to Coleman Medium. Right off the rip? Right off the rip. That's where I met Matt at Coleman Medium. At the medium. Yes. Okay. And um, while I'm at the medium, they accuse me of doing income tax fraud, huh. which is semi-true. 
But um, <laughs> 16 years wasn't enough to just say, okay, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> never opportunity is, for money is never be beyond me, but stupidly, but um, it was semi true. So then they sent me from the medium to the pen. But they, before they sent me to the pen, they were actually trying to bring charges based on what other inmates were saying. They you sent know. you to Coleman Pen? No, they sent me to Beaumont, Bloody Beaumont Pen. Oh, fuck. I heard all about that. Shh, where I did six years. Ooh. Yes. You know who was in there? Joey was in there. Joe like, who? Joey Merlino. Yes. Yeah. He, were, you in, were you there when he was there? When he was at Coleman Medium? No, he was at... Uh, Bloody. Joey Joe Moreno, Moreno, right? Moreno. Yes. Yeah, he's like a little bit shorter than me. He has that website, Free Joe. He, he... Mm, I don't know. I'll show you a picture of him when, when we're done. Okay. But I, he was in Bloody Beaumont. He said that is the worst fucking place to be. It is. Yo, Rob, they're, Joey was telling me all about it. He's like, dude, every day somebody's getting stabbed, getting killed. 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 They're, they're, the guards, they have uh, towers, and they're shooting fucking rubber bullets three times a day. What state is this? Texas. Texas. Hated it. They call it Bloody Beaumont because there's blood every fucking day. I did six years there. <clears throat> Joe did 10. <sighs> did 10. Yep. They don't give a fuck. They just hope. No. They kept him all the way to 10 until they put him down to a medium. And he only had 12. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not a place you want to be. So that was terrible. I, I already know that. It was uh, like the experiences there are, are undescribable. It's horrific. Now, how did you get through that? Because you're you're a white collar guy. You're right. not some fucking murderer, right? How did you get through six years in Bloody Beaumont? Well, when I went there, I told myself to make myself invaluable, to to try to get to where I'm someone that's sought out for help. So I started doing legal work. So I made myself invaluable to those people that were there. So they wouldn't fuck with you. They wouldn't fuck with me. And they didn't. Because, yeah. hey, that's the, that's my law guy. I'm doing legal work. And I, I did it inexpensively, which served two purposes. It kept me very busy, right? And then it kept me in their graces where nobody fucked with me. Now, I, I know from friends and, and seeing some shit that it's very segregated in the pen. Yes. In the medium and the low in the camps is not. No. But in the pen, it's, it's blacks with blacks, yes. Spanish with Spanish, because there's a lot of gang yes. shit going on. Absolutely. Did you get caught in any of that crossfire, or because you, you were- Well, you, had you know, I, I had my own issues, but um, no, not really, because I, I kind of talk to who I talk to. And I, I talk to all races, and you know, people from the Spanish, like I hate, people from the Spanish and the white and the black all said, you know, I hate all this racist shit that we have to- go through this this front we have to put on because we're in a penitentiary yeah it's like it's all it's all ignorance you know what i'm saying we're, we're dealing with complete ignorance so um i i did the the best i could to like avoid all that stuff but i i seen it firsthand and i talked to some of the people that dealt with it it's it's just not it's not a, it's not a pretty sight but it, it's kind of what goes on it's like life day and night and life and death you know and for people that don't know, that is the worst federal prison, yes. federal penitentiary one, in one the country. Big, Big Sandy's actually the worst. But worse than Bloody, Bloody Beaumont? Worse than Bloody Beaumont. Bloody Beaumont was, was bad. It was bad, but Big Sandy's the worst. There was murders and killings and riots and uproars. Yeah, and well, you were there. I, I had just heard I was, from I was multiple there friends that were at both. The two of the hurricanes. Oh, the, man. I mean, it, listen, I've, I've spent some of the worst days of my life de dealing with that shit. It was horrible. But you know what? You found a way to get through it with the legal work. Yes. And you know what I can't stand, and I think you would agree with me, is they put these fucking shows on TV that make it look like it's so bad. I mean, it's. I mean, we're we're talking about bloody Beaumont here, so exclude that. That's right. an exception. Well, there's days. Yeah, but they're but normally in a in a penitentiary, it's bad, but it's not what they portray on TV. And if you're in a medium and a low, oh yeah, or a camp. <laughs> The shit that they put on the TV where there's all these fights and all these rapes and shit, that's bullshit. Yeah, it's bullshit. You know it and I, that's just drama. Because there's a lot more people just trying to get through their time and get out. Right, because everybody wants to go down to the medium. Yes. And they want to get to the low, to the and low. if they're not violent, they'll leave from a camp. Yes, they want they want to get to the low where it's laid back and it's, I oh, that's what I wanted bad. I never made it to a low, but that's what I wanted bad was a chance to, to just relax, to be around people. And, and not have the stress of the possibility of extreme violence. I'm sure there were fights, and I heard there were a couple of stabbings, but that's so rare. You know what I'm saying? It only happens 
to I guess the right person gets re- provoked. You know what I'm saying? It's it's all what what I have to say. I learned from prison is that there are severe consequences to our social um, mistakes. You know what I'm saying? Like interrupting somebody or skipping somebody in line. It's about respect. It's about respect. And and if somebody's been there ten years. Look, you, you know, that's their life. Yes. You come in and you try to get in front of them, you're going to get fucked up. You're going to get fucked up. And in a penitentiary, you're dealing with somebody doing 20, 25 years. What does he care about or, another or two? Or life. Or yeah. life, for that matter. What does he care about another two? You just gypped him in line. That's yes. a big deal. That's a big deal. Respect is very important. And when people had asked me, is this shit real on TV? I said, My, it, nothing like that. <laughs> Amen. Only the only time shit like that happens is when you do that. You jip in front of somebody, or but if you just go in, even a pen. Now I'm not saying Beaumont. I'm just saying a regular pen. Right. And you're respectful and you mind your business and you don't get involved in betting or anything like that. None of that shit happens. Period. Amen. And a medium, none of that shit happens. A low, no. None of that shit. Oh, good. Period. Absolutely no. No, no, and no, no, no. <laughs> it, good. It's bullshit. What you see on TV is not true. And these guys that go on their YouTube and their Instagram and try to act like they're all tough and they went through all this shit because they did three years and wherever and they got in this fight, that fight. No, they didn't. No, no. They, right. they, they absolutely did not. <laughs> absolutely. You might have right. got some pussy out of it. I give you props <laughs> for that. But you and I both know, motherfucker, you didn't get in no fight. A- amen. Amen. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. You're right. You're right. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of fronting. But, you, but you know, it's an, it's an imaginary world anyway. And only people who've been there can really understand and relate to it, especially once you meet someone on the outside that you knew from the inside. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You knew Matt from the inside. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, to see people function in both atmospheres is a is a beautiful thing. It is. You know, to, because the, to see people in that surrounding and then in this surrounding is, is very nice. It's a good feeling because you're, t- you're saying to yourself, like, this is this place doesn't define who we are. And we can actually function out in this outside world also. And and I've said this before. My whole problem with the judicial system on top of (laughs) you have the out of all the people I've talked to, your sentence is the the most bullshit other than a a friend of mine who got 20. Did I tell I I've told you, I think. And I said it earlier, but a friend of mine got 22 fucking years. Not a friend of mine, a guy that I knew. He had 20 grams of crack. At 17, 18 years, he was just trying to feed his family. You know, he wasn't whatever. Dickhead Clinton and Dickhead Obama <laughs> signed the fucking mandatory minimums. <laughs> Give him 26 fucking years. And he was just the guy on the corner with the crack. And because of the Crazy. one to a, what is it, one to a hundred thousand or one? <laughs> one to a hundred, one to a hundred. One to a hundred. And he got rocked. And the, and the guy was the nicest fucking guy on the planet. Is he he was in there? with the attack. Is he still in there? Is he out? Fuck, he's still in there. He can't try to overturn it or what? <clears throat> well, now, or? well, now, now you can. You have an opportunity. Now they're starting to do it. Like you know, guys are leaving, but the guys that that were able to get out of it, they had people on the outside. This guy, he's already been in eighteen years. He, you know, his family stopped talking to him. He thinks he has a kid, but doesn't know he's locked up. It. He just turned eighteen. He's been in there fucking 15 years, so he's got nobody to call to say, hey, can you file an appeal? Can you do this? Can you do that? Then he's black, right? So then on top of that, like the jailhouse lawyers are usually white, usually. Yes. And they really don't partake to the crack guy. I I mean, it's unfortunate because he doesn't deserve that. And then that, and it's fucking crazy. I mean, he can barely, you know, like his English is fucked up and, but he did get his GED. You know, but but I mean that's the kind of shit that they're doing to people. It's just so fucking wrong. It is. It's it's a it's an ugly system, and it's Obama and Clinton, man. That's who's behind it. Ask <laughs> well, Roger at least, Stone. At least Trump. At least Trump signed the. Uh, Yo, Trump got the blacks out of there, and yeah. then these motherfuckers vote for uh, what the fuck is Biden. there? Biden, who's with Harris, who put more black people away than any other fucking judge in the country, <laughs> and she got and Biden gets all the black votes. Explain that to me. <laughs> This dirty bitch puts more black people away for bullshit than anybody, and no offense to your race. No, and these idiots go vote for her. <laughs> I mean, hello. <laughs> well, she's, well, because she she's going to give you, she, she promised did. you some money, is what she did. <laughs> That's all you got to say to you guys. Did you want some money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll take some money. We'll take but some money. But you could say to me, hey, look, we'll look the other way, and I'm voting for you. 
So I'm I'm with you. That's right. So I evened it out, right? There you go. So I can't get uh, charged with uh, what the fuck could they hit me with? Uh, Can- cancel culture. Cancel culture. Cancel culture. Or uh, bo- bo- is that would that be bullying? I don't know. Who the fuck knows what it could be, right? Okay, so you do your 16 years. Yes. Now, what is it like when you get out after 16 fucking years? So you walk out that door. 16 years, everything's changed. What year did you go in? Uh, 2007. So the iPhone was out yet or no? Yeah. As a matter of fact, what's funny is we had Blackberries, okay. and I had just ordered the first iPhone. iPhone. And I was supposed to, when we flew, when we were getting ready to fly to Tampa where we got arrested, on the plane as we're getting on, the the it was AT&T called and said, hey, your iPhone is in. <laughs> I said, well, well, as soon as I get back, I'm coming to pick that <laughs> motherfucker up. <laughs> And I never came back. <laughs> so, you, so now you walk out after 16 years. Get an well, what, iPhone. What year did you get out? Uh, 2020. God, April. Damn. Yes. So you come out and there's iPhone fucking 10, yeah. 11, Listen, this thing, this thing does everything. This what thing, number is that? Which one is that? Uh, I think this is the, the 8. The 8. Okay, yeah. so you're on the 8. Right. So you got ways to go to catch up. Yes. Yeah, you're five behind. <laughs> <laughs> about to be six. It's about five. I guess, I guess we're on the 13. Um. So how fucked up is that to walk out and see the world after 16 years? Well, it's it's been it's been fascinating. I'm very slow. Like um, the one thing that hit me the most is the price of uh, fast food. Because when I went in, five dollars would cover most happy. Like I could go anywhere. Like five dollar five dollar foot long. <laughs> yeah. I could go anywhere, and five bucks would feed me at any mm-hmm. fast food joint. You know, now a Big Mac is like six dollars and. This guy had a Big Mac. That's six eighty nine. Um, one Big Mac. That's six eight. What the fuck? <laughs> are, are, are you questioning them at the window? Like, you mean that's a Big Mac with French fries and a uh, soda too, right? Yeah, yeah. No, it's just a Big Mac. <laughs> yeah. Like, what the? F- you know, it's it's unbelievable. The prices are are. That's what's the most shocking. But like I told you, Tampa has my city has changed. It's hip. It's not even like it, it was a. I had I lived in a square city, and now it's. Tampa's kind of hip. They have all kind of hip things going on. So I'm enjoying it. I don't it. like it. I don't like it. I had a bar in Ebor, and I I don't like it at all. I, I like it here. It's fast paced. It's smooth. Everything's around me. Everything I want. You talking about on the strip right here? This I'm, I'm saying like Palm Beach County in oh. general. I got oh, yeah. I got Boca twenty minutes this way. Yes. I got Palm Beach Gardens twenty minutes this way. Oh, yes. yes. I got Worth Avenue, which is right over here. Pacino's got a house down here. Ooh. Sylvester Stallone's got a house down here. So everything I wanted. Tiger right Woods here. had a house over this way. Yeah, where's Tiger Woods? He knows. Oh, he's gone. He's moved. Jib- he moved. When he got into that wreck, when he got into an argument with his wife, he moved. No, I think he's still here. Yeah, his kid plays soccer. Oh, with your kid? Uh, well, in the league. Yeah, yeah his, wow. yeah, he's his still kid plays soccer. Yeah, and well, Jordan. Tiger, Tiger Woods, y'all. Jordan's over here. Jordan's got a restaurant down the street. Jordan does? Yeah, yeah he's, he's right Jupiter. there. Bears, Jupiter. Bears Club. Yeah. Whoa. So like right here is everything. Yes. You know what I mean? This is like I, this is my first time seeing this. This place is gorgeous. Fucking like Tampa. The condos are unbelievable. I go to Tampa when I had that fucking bar and I you know, I only know like South Philly, Jersey, New York, and here. Right? Right. And California. I used to go to California and watch the Lakers all the time. And when I came here, I was like, Holy fuck, these guys are flying like ninety miles an hour on the highway and shit. That fucked me up. Then I did the whole thing out there in Tampa, and I went out there, and I'm used to this area, right? You know, more – not there's low – I mean, they're killing each other on 45th Street left and right. But I go to Tampa, and I'm seeing fucking vans go by with no – like, you know, like the sliding door in a van? There's, like, no fucking sliding door, and they're just driving down the fucking road like nothing. And I'm like, what the fuck? Where the fuck am I? Like, no – like, multiple times I've seen this. Like, a van with no sliding door, two kids in the back – a car with like a wheel wiggling and shit. I don't like it out there at all. <laughs> to me, it's just a shithole. Tampa's got Tom Brady now too. So. Yes, we do. Yes, you do. So we've changed things. Come yeah. On. yeah, come on I'll, back. I'll, I'll just, come on back. We me, got Tom, baby. Me, me, Rob, and Leo had a whole thing with the goat. I think, <laughs> I think Brady. Uh, Rob here thinks Montana, and Lilo thinks Marina. What? For what? The, the greatest? Goat. The goat? Yeah. Come on. Who do you think? Listen, t- come on. Tom Brady, like Uh-oh, Tom Brady. Yeah. <laughs> Tom just... Brady is an um like he is an above average quarterback. He doesn't have ex- he doesn't have the talent of like Russell Wilson 
or um, Mahomes, Mahomes, but he is an above average quarterback who's playing in the league 23, 24 years, and he's just waiting for him to break every record just by sheer volume of time he's spent in the league. You know what I'm saying? So who and do you think is the GOAT? He's the GOAT. He's the GOAT. Because he's gonna he's gonna hold every he's gonna play next year. Yeah. And like I'm gonna presume that next year he's probably gonna retire. And I think when he retires, he's gonna coach. I think he's gonna move from that to coaching. You think he's gonna coach? Oh yeah. I think he might coach the Bucks. I think he might stay with the Bucks and coach. What do you think? I know Brady's not your goat. He's Montana. He did he did recently purchase a condo that's being built in Jupiter. Yes, my source that I heard. So yeah, he's he's gonna he's gonna <laughs> he's probably gonna enter coaching for the Bucks as a as a, a, a as a coordinator or a quarterback coach. He's gonna pick some quarterback and probably train him. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna go to the next level. He's not gonna go to the booth and 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 no, call games. What about own? You think maybe he'll get in with a partnership? Oh, absolutely. Own, team, own, and team. own I don't think so. No, I don't think so. A- every player that's ever done that pretty much failed. Yeah, well, Jordan. I mean, Jordan still has the what? Jordan still has the Bobcats in there, eh. and then you got Jeter now. With he's, the Marlins. he's got the Wizards, the Washington Wizards, or they the changed. Bobcats. Oh, they're the Bobcats now. And then you got the uh, and they're like zero and fifteen. Yeah. And then you got uh, <laughs> Derek Jeter with the Marlins now. Suck. Uh, they suck. Um, so yeah, I guess it doesn't really work out too. Well. No, it doesn't. I, I think I think he'll coach. I Although think a coordinator. Coach, I yeah, court. He'll start off a coordinator. And he'll head coach a team. He probably he won't head coach the Bucks. But he'll start off as a coordinator with the Bucks. Well, if he moves to fucking Jupiter, there's a reason. For oh it. yeah, he's right. What do you think, Rob? You think he'll, do you think he'll he'll do that? I don't know. I think he's just gonna hang it up and just go enjoy into the sunset. Fucking life. Just I, I think life. I think he'll still stay in the game. I think he'll still. Maybe, yeah, just, it depends on how. I don't even think he'll take time off. I think he'll go right from player to a, a nah, coordinator. See, I think he'll definitely take time off. Nah, I think he'll he'll all jump them out. years. Yeah, he got hit last year, bro. First six games, he got cracked. Oh yeah, he did. I never seen him get hit like that in my life. And, and this six, this six games, he's. I thought we did we play the Bills. We already played the Bills and they beat us. No, who beat us? The Bills. Mm. No, the Rams. They played the Bills coming Rams. up this yeah, week. It was the Rams. That's another test. Yeah, that's another test. That's another test. That's a hellified defense. They've only lost one game so far, right? Yeah, or is it two? Yeah, it's one. Yeah, only undefeated team is the Arizona Card Arizona Cardinals. I think it's going to be San Francisco and Tampa again. Why do you think San Francisco? Not San Francisco. Uh, KC, KC. Nah, KC is KC is struggling. They've only won three games. They're just they're three and three. What the fuck? Why? And they just beat the Washington. On football team, like they've beaten three sorry teams. The three good teams they played, they lost to them. Okay, I take that. See, I, I haven't had time to watch much of it. I, the Bills, I think it's the Bills. The Bills are tough. Yeah. The Bills are hellified defense, and that Josh Allen is well, like yeah, I've been rooting for him. Josh Allen, yeah. who's your pick for the Super Bowl, Rob? I'd go uh, Bills right now on the AFC, NFC. Not the fucking Cowboys. Hopefully not the fucking Cowboys. It might be the Cowboys. The Cowboys is complete. So far, but, um, you know, Cardinals I don't think will last. Uh, They got Zach Ertz now. The Uh, question is, who's going to beat Brady? Oh, they did. Uh, You know what? And this, people are going to disagree with this probably. You know who I think is going to do it? And he's going to go out with a hurrah. Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers, his final year in Green Bay. He said it. This is it. He's not going to retire. He's looking to go somewhere else because he doesn't get along with the whole thing. But I think... No way, because they you won't let. They Green won't Bay let him beat Tampa. No way, they won't let him call audibles. They won't let it. That coach will not let Aaron Rodgers call audibles. No way. There's no way they're going to win. Okay. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the league, and he they is. don't let him call. He, raw talent wise, yeah. he is. He's been that. He he's had the skill set of all these young quarterbacks coming in forever. Forever. When he replaced Favre. He's had that skill set the whole time. If he had Brady's team, he'd oh, be yeah. a beast. Oh my well, god! His line, his offensive line. Yeah, I mean, that's I, think, that's I think I think that's where he'd probably come I, though. I, he just, Tampa. He just beat the Bears this week, and I guess he was caught saying, "I, I own, own you." <laughs> well, he said that it was it's a woman in the stand giving him the double bird. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, and, and I heard I had just heard <laughs> um, um, Eli Manning oh, saying Eagles. that saying that like is nothing more frustrating than a young kid. Giving you the double birds, you're like, holy shit! Like he goes, he wanted to snap on him. <laughs> yeah, he did it. He did it. He did it on ESPN. They had him and Peyton do like a thing for a thing, and they're talking about the Eagles. Yeah, and he's like, oh, they have the worst fans in the world. He goes, and on live TV, he goes, you know, when you got like the the, the eight year old kid and he's flicking you off, and he's he's going like this, and everybody's like, Peyton's just looking like, 
Uh oh, shit. TV. <laughs> they, they didn't blur he had it out. They didn't blur it out. No, he had, he had, they didn't blur out the birds. They did. Well, I guess no, in, the, in I, the repeat. In the repeat. In the live repeat. TV, they blurred there's, it out. there's Eli Manning like this. <laughs> he had to come back and apologize for that shit. Yeah. I, yeah. I, okay. So my pick is Bills. Uh, I go with that one. And Rodgers is not going to be Brady without so being able Brady. to call. If he could call audibles and had a better front line, maybe. But well, you got, you got Arizona. You got um, Green Bay. Uh, in the NFC, um, Cowboys if... and the Cowboys and probably Tampa Bay. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if Brady makes it. You know, I th- I think he just like if he has his whole team, if he gets that defense back, probably, probably. Yeah, hard to bet against them. I mean, hard, yeah, it would. Be. Hard, hard. Well, it's it's hard because it, it, like they're dropping passes, but when it comes when it's money time, Brady is last four minutes he could beat anybody. Yeah. He, he, I don't mon- give a fuck. Brady's he's money. He's money times. when he needs to be money. Yeah. <laughs> well, this year you get to see it. Yes, I do. And maybe even on a big screen, <laughs> right? <laughs> Not the fucking seventeen screens fighting over the yes. Well, what channel? That's right. On, right. And, and listen to it on the radio. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that's fun. <laughs> While they're yelling and fucking screaming. Yes. Right? Yes. And you can't say shit because you don't want any problems. Yes. You're just better yeah. off reading fucking books. <laughs> <clears throat> so now you get out, and, and the biggest thing was the cost of food. Yes. And what what else was like really fucking mind blowing to you? Um, you want to hit something funny? Like so, um, dating. So when oh, I went yeah. in, you know, I was married when I went in. You know, my wife and I separated. She got out like eight years prior to me, so she got her another boyfriend. And so when I got out, I had Shocker. to go. I had to go. Yeah, I had to go to the dating scene. And when I went to the dating scene, like I met a couple of girls. And they were sending me like naked pics, and I'm like, "What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Is this legal?" <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, because like, and, and like, and when I went out with these girls and, and having sex, they're actually videotaping. <laughs> and so you're like. I, I, I'm like what are you setting me up for now? Yeah, right? I'm like, "What the fuck is going? Like, this is not the world that I left." In 2007, no, like right? n- like if I were to take my phone in 2007 and say, "Hey, how about I videotape this, bitch? Have you lost your fucking mind?" <laughs> now they're like, "Okay, let me get a picture of you doing that to me." You know, I never thought about that. You know? Oh yeah, yeah they, that would fuck me, me up. And so. they're like, "Hey, can I get a dick pic?" And I'm like, "Oh my god!" Like, now are you thinking in your head, "Is this legal to do this?" Exactly. I'm on fucking like, yeah, I'm yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm not prepared for this shit at all. I'm not prepared for that at all. And it's actually kind of intimidating. It's kind of, I'm like, holy, these women are kind of open with their sexuality. And I don't, I, 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 I haven't had sex in 14, 15 years. <laughs> I might not be ready for this. <laughs> yeah. Because you're nervous. Yeah. Right? Can I hold you? <laughs> yeah. Can you just cuddle with me? That's right. You know? Yeah. That's right. Like, I'll probably nut in a couple of seconds. What? Do, what? Yeah. yeah. Give, me a, give me a break. I'm really not a two minute man, but I just did 16 fucking years. Sorry. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, if you want, I'll jerk off first. <laughs> You know, <laughs> so it, 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 so that was another thing that took me a minute to get acclimated to. Um, I'm not saying I don't even think I'm I'm used to it now, but I I've got a steady girlfriend now, and and so like I'm I'm prepared. But just the openness of people and the use of the cell phone, yeah. Like and what this thing does, like just the other day, it dinged me and said we have a video ready, and I go through and they're taking, they're doing a slideshow with music. Of pictures of me for the whole month, like oh. it just like my phone did. Oh that. yeah, yeah, on, and on I'm photos. Like, yeah, yeah. What the fuck? So you got out 2020. What month? April. Oh damn! So you've only been out like a year, year and a half, about a year and a half. But I mean, a year and a half is nothing after being away for 16 and a half. Yeah, you know, right? It's 14 not. or whatever two month you're, bullshit you're right. good time that they gave you. You're right. It's not. Did you go to a halfway house? Yes, I did. I did. Um. Well, I got out. I went to the halfway house in April, but I got completely released in August. So, so really, went, it's been about a year. About a year, like free, free. Yes. Well, not free, free, but like probation. Yes. Wise. Yes. Damn, so you haven't had. You don't even know. I don't. I don't even know. You don't even know. I don't even know. <laughs> On oh, <not> real. <laughs> On oh, real, real. He came out to masks. Yeah, you came out. That you yes. came out to sleepy. Well, you and came and, out and, and that that was actually a benefit. That kind of helped me more than it hurt me. Because it put me immediately on house arrest, so it took me out of the halfway house immediately. And then so you went and saw the gas prices. Yeah. 
Thank well, you, those sir. have been going up. Not when the other guy was in. No, it wasn't. They it were wasn't going, going down. <laughs> the economy was booming. Yeah, and now it's unbooming. This guy <laughs> fucked everything. <laughs> Wow, right. I mean, it's scary. It, it's scary. It, it's scary, and and it's it's going faster and faster and faster. And Down this the guy toilet. is dead set on mandating that V. V yes. is one of them words. Yes, dead set on mandating that shit. Even though the fucking research shows the, how bad it is, <laughs> and how many strokes and how many heart attacks. I, I just had dinner last night with Roger Stone and another guy. I don't want to throw him out there. And we were just going. Then they had snacks of shit strokes uh fluid in the body where like it's out to here oh yeah it's bad Holy i mean it, it's not it's rare but the odds of you beating if you're reasonably healthy the odds of you beating it naturally through medicine uh-huh is with no side effects is more than likely percentage wise if you're healthy than taking the v because you could still get it with the v oh wow it's more of a protection thing what's this here uh Colin Powell passed away today, and he got the V. It says. Right oh, okay. He so was, he was he was V'd. He was V'd. It's right here. Cording had been boom and was treated at Walter Reed. So he passed away today. And he got the V. Yeah. So I would love to know what fa- Mr. Fugazi Fauci has to say about that <laughs> mother. Fugazi. It would be interesting <laughs> to see what they say. So yeah, eighty-four years old. I'm sure. They'll say. You know, at that uh, age, there's you know. Eighty-four. Wow. Yeah. Well, they're telling you if if you're older to get it. Yeah. Well, you, I didn't know he was that old, man. Wow. Fuck that. You'll never see me. I'll just stay in the fucking house. I'm never getting that motherfucker. Mm-mm. Stay home. Did you get it? Yes, unfortunately, I did. Probation wanted you to get it, right? <laughs> yep. Government, but I'm like, okay, to be free, I got you. Whatever you want, baby. Did you get sick after it? I got sick after the the second. I had to get the the two the portion. Booster? Yeah. So not not the booster. I had to get the two shot. Um, version and the second one I got got me pretty sick. So how like what tired, the cold, tired and and yeah like just miserable, sick. So yeah, how long? About a day or two. I think I, after a day I came out of it pretty quick. Now if you wouldn't have been on probation, would you have gotten it? No. Nah. Hell no. Hell. I don't. Hell to the f no. Yeah, that's right. I Hell no. I wouldn't shit. have got. It. <laughs> Somebody gives me sixteen years for one hundred fifty k. I'm not listening to one fucking thing you say. <laughs> Unless it gives me freedom. <laughs> right? Am I right That's or right. wrong? You're right. You're right. <laughs> yeah. 16 Fuck for 150? Yeah, you're right. It ain't even 150. It was about 150. So, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Now, was your family, like your mom and dad, were they supportive throughout very, all this? Very, my mom was very supportive. She took care of my daughter the whole time. And uh, my family was very supportive of me throughout the whole process. That's so I awesome. appreciate it. You're yes. one lucky man. Yes, thank you. Most times it doesn't, especially with a, a bid like that. <laughs> Six. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. So you, you hold on. You go in, and your daughter's how old? Uh, four months. And you come out, and she's how old? Fourteen. Wow. How does that, that work? Like? Thirteen. Yeah. She's thirteen. What was that like? That's, <sighs> that's crazy. Yes, meeting meeting her like her first meeting is like I don't want to talk to him. Like don't make me. And I used to call her all the time. We talked on the phone all the time. And when I got out, she's still kind of like I don't want to meet him. I don't want to talk to him. Was that the mom in her head? Uh, no, the the mom isn't really a mom. She's not, um, because she was gone for six years, mm-hmm. she just kind of like uh, left my daughter to her, my family to raise, and she's like, okay, I'm just, that. that's, I wouldn't say she's like, that never happened, but she's just not the mother type of a female, so, which is surprising. I thought she would be, but no, she's not the mother type of female, so they kind of have a, a friendship relationship. It's not a parent-daughter. It's more of a, like, okay, Hey, I know you. You know me. <laughs> I, I I get it. I get it. So now you get out. She don't want to see you. My daughter. Yes. Your daughter. Now, how do you break that where she's willing to have? Well, a we we start we start hanging out together. And what I did was early on, I um I told her I I took a job door dashing, and I asked her. I said, look, if you door dash with me, I'll split the money with you. You know. Good she's move. like, oh, cool. Good move. So we so we together we door dashed and we kind of like bonded. Good dad during, move. During, good during dad that. move. That was yeah. a good dad move. Yeah, trying to because she wanted money. She's like, Can you give me money? I said, Look, I got an idea. How about we do this? I go, I don't really have that kind of money, but if we work together, I'll split it with you. Good move, Zach. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> that was a good move. Yeah. So then we when we did that, we kind of bonded. And ever since then, and we've been just very growing close. slowly yes. and slowly. Yes. Yes. Now it now with what like you were doing and Matt was doing and so on and so forth, 
if somebody wants you, is there any way like to protect yourself? Like, so when you're, when you see a mark and you go after that mark, right. Is there a way for a person to protect themselves other than fucking life lock? <laughs> well, I don't know. If, I don't know if life lock actually protects you, but you have it to alert you, I guess. Yeah, right? yeah. You have to be diligent and check your statement, you know, to make sure that there's no problem. Um, you keep your your cards to to alert on your phone. Like any any use of any card, as long as it alerts you on your phone, then that will protect you because then you'll be like, oh, I didn't do that. You know what I'm saying? And and that's how you protect yourself. Just make yourself aware of all transactions that occur, you know, within your account at any time. So you would recommend to anybody put all alerts onto your phone. Yes. Whenever a transaction occurs. No matter you, what it is. Yes. You get an alert on your phone. Like one cent, I one, want it on my phone. Yes. And and then when it comes up, then you know if someone's accessing your account. And that'll keep you ahead of the game. And you can not only that, but you know and then you can turn the card off or at that moment in time. You can reverse it or let the police know that that's an illegal transaction. And and then what happens is they could start an investigation at that point in time. And then you as the fraudster would, would realize that, okay, he caught on to it. I'm going to move on to the next one. Right. That right. or or I could be blind and that would get me caught. And, and So either and, way, it, it's a way to avoid it. Yes. Right? Yes, it is. Okay. Now, when when somebody says fraud to you, like because people think differently of it, like what, what does fraud mean to you? Um, fraud is kind of like uh, using um, misinformation to obtain money or to obtain a service that I wouldn't have to pay for. Um, that's what fraud means to me. It's like providing you misinformation that would give you, that would make you do something that you would, that would make you do something under false pretense. Right. You know, so you would do your normal service or you would give me money when you wouldn't give me money had I not told you this lie. Gotcha. That's what fraud. Makes yeah, I agree with that. All right. And then what do you look for in a, like a, like we used to call it a mark. So like what do you look for in a mark? Well, you know, like my fraud is never against a person. It's normally against an institution. And what I look for is like a loophole, like um, something that's not really covered by your people. Like, you know, most companies and banks – and institutions plan on certain things. Well, I look for the thing that you haven't planned on. Like um, with what I was doing with the claims, mm -hmm. like you didn't plan on me taking my own money and then telling you that somebody else took it. My, wow, you're a systematic motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, I mean, really. Yeah, thank. You. And, and you can't, and you can't plan for that because if I take your money, if the bank doesn't believe you, then you would quit that bank. If I stole your money and the bank said, look, it's kind of suspicious and we're not going to give you your money back. You're like, what? Fuck you. I don't want to deal with you anymore. Right. But it's also the but it's the law that they give you your money back, you know, but so they can't take that chance. So I understand that out of one time is a courtesy to you. So in my mind. So if I open an account and I take my own money, then give me that courtesy. So in my mind, I'm thinking. Okay, I'll get people to open up multiple accounts and I will get their one courtesy out of them. So whereas if someone actually took their money, right, they're not going to get that courtesy anymore. I've already taken that one courtesy, but I've split it with them as, as money. Hmm. So it's just I'm looking for a loophole in the system, something that you can't plan against. You know what I'm saying? I see. And once you plan against it, then I say, okay, I can't do that anymore. Let me see what the other loophole is. Because you can't protect everything. Everything can't be officially covered. So I look for other loopholes and systems. So basically what you have to do is you have to fix, identify and fix what you think is a loophole in your in your system. Now, Matt was in not too long ago, and he, he had said that it's easier now than it was back when he and you were doing That's it. That's absolutely untrue. <clears throat> it, you disagree it with that? Yes. It appears easier now because a lot more things are electronic, but they have... You know, um, my prosecutor told the judge that he wanted me to have a sentence so long that when I get out that the system has changed so much that I won't be able to commit fraud. And he's, and he's actually kind of accurate because, like, the system now has things in, a, in, in place that I don't even, like, even identify. Just dealing with my own, you know, things on a bank level, 
You know, there, there are checks and balances in place that I'm like, what the hell happened? Why couldn't I get this account? Or why did they close my account here? Because they have checks and balance. They're, they're checking different things. To make it. It's just not obvious. Matt believes it's easier because there's more access. There's more prepaid cards. Like when I went in, I used to get green dot cards all the time. It didn't take anything to get them. Now they they uh, to get a prepaid card is almost like opening up a bank account. Yeah, they, they ask for your ID, yes, everything. Yeah, yes, they ask for everything, and they want to verify you who you are. They're just not going to give you the account anymore. But when I went in, they used to give it away. So there are, like I said, there are invisible things that are in place that prevent you from doing what we did. Matt just believes it's easier because there's more access. I don't think he's incorporating the, te the technology that has come about yes. since he did it. So, yes, there's more access, but there's also more alerts, yes, security, yes. firewalls, all that kind of shit. I'm going to tell you the thing that impresses me is, like, I used to be able, if I don't remember my email, ad my email password, it was very easy to get into my email. Now it's not easy to get in my email. Especially if you got the two-step. Yes. Which a lot of companies, even um, oh, just, just email. <clears throat> just email or, or uh, uh, I do a lot of marketing. That's what yeah. I do during the day. And one of the companies I use, it's, it's just a, a newsletter. Yes. They made you put uh, two-step on YouTube, November something. If you don't have two-step uh, two authorization. Yeah. You can't post a video. Well, they they take and everybody relies on your phone to text you. Yeah, yeah. So now, when when you so now you're out, you're doing this, you're doing that, you're adjusting to life. You're here now. So now you have a podcast. You're you're, you're building the podcast. Yes, I'm I see building you, you're on podcast. you're on Matt's quite a bit. Right. Do you have your own now? We, no, we won't I'm, throw I'm, it out yet because you want right, to build I'm, it more I'm, before you right. I'm it. setting I'm setting it up and getting ready for that. But you haven't started it yet. I haven't yet. started it yet. Okay. Is that one of your, your plans? Yes, that's one of my goals. And then uh what else do you have? Like what do you, what do you see yourself doing over the next three years? Well, I've been working with my girlfriend. Um she's thinking about opening up a wine bar in, in Tampa. I'm I'm looking at um that's one of my goals. Just like my dream is retirement, is just being able to meet and greet people on, on a social level and talk to them and maybe having a platform where I'm going on YouTube and talking. Just something that's going to carry me by through my old age that to, to take me on, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Motherfucker doesn't have one wrinkle. <laughs> Not yet. It's coming. You ain't it's ain't coming. no goddamn it's wrinkles. It's coming. You They're ain't coming. getting no wrinkles. <laughs> They're coming. Bullshit. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be back here in 10 years look exactly the same. I hope so. Today. You I will. I hope so. You in my 60s, I skin. hope so. <laughs> you guys do. All right. So, um, so for somebody who who has done what you did, or maybe doing it as we speak, would you tell them just to stop and fucking run? Yeah, stop. Just take your money and fucking bounce. Yes, right? take take your money and what I because I taught classes in prison and I told people that as as a criminal, we're actually business minded, and if you put your efforts into a legal business, you'll actually make money, and then there's guarantees in place that will keep you from going under. And on an illegal business, there's no guarantees in place to keep you from going under. There's actually things that'll pull you down. Like you got arrest, you got theft. You know what I'm saying? There are things that you can't report that you where you take serious losses in an illegal business that you have to eat it and rebuild it up. In a legal business, there are actually things in place that will protect you from any serious loss to make your business successful. If you put your efforts into a legal business, you'll find that you're successful. If you're thinking criminal enterprisely, all that all that innovation can be transported into something legal that would thrive your business and take you to the next level. You have a talent that you don't realize, but you're wasting it on something illegal because you're trying to get over in this way for the fast money. But if you actually transpose that in the, the legit steady and slow buildup of money, you'll be very successful. I couldn't agree with you more. If you take the same um, like work routine yes. and uh, motivation and effort that you did in the illegal business, there is no difference between that and legal. Yep. The difference is it takes a lot fucking longer it takes a little uh, and not even like, a little longer. bit yeah well it, well and i would well yeah it does take longer because i i like any if you're a crack dealer and you're on the street every day and you're dealing with crackheads you know what i'm saying and you're giving them a subpar product you've got sales skills because you i want you to buy from me and not him 
You know what I'm saying? So you've got to drive where you could sell something else. Right. You don't have to sell crack. You can sell something else. Right, because there's a hundred of crack dealers, but what's yeah. your niche? Yes, So exactly. then you take that into legal life and yes. you say, okay, what is my niche? With my, you sell siding or you sell it doesn't matter different what products. It yeah, you now you're a salesman and you, you're you selling to someone where the police aren't going to come and arrest you for making that yeah. sale. You're just transitioning your illegal skills to, to, the, legal to the legal way. It's the exact same thing. There's no difference in my opinion. Plenty of criminals have been in. I've gotten in trouble myself. And there's fucking no difference other than it takes forever. Amen. And That's if you're it. trying, if you think you're going to leave the legal, uh, illegal life and in one year you're going to have anything close to what you had illegal, that's two people that need therapy. <laughs> but I say Amen. that your lawyer needs therapy. Yes. She, well, she needs locked the fuck up. <sighs> yes. So she needs. Please. She needs but, an eight piece. But there's my point. She did it. Well, I think in my opinion, something illegally, legally, that's considered legally. Like, does that make sense? What I just yes. Said? So like, it's like, called like, she's with the end. Correct. So like, right. uh, like the uh, drug uh, companies that sell products out oh. there that are supposed to help with this. And then they list the side effects that are like they'll cause you to, you know, stroke this, blah, 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 blah. Fucking yeah, Christ, you hear a commercial, it's fucking and, 90 seconds but, but of side effects. But they get away with selling it legally, illegally, legally. Right. Yes. Uh, so When there's 10 other drugs that do the same thing with no side effects, that they mark the fucking price through the roof so that you buy the one that you need 10 other drugs to deal alleviate. with the side effects, or yes. alleviate the side effects from the one that they want. So even though there might be... A, I won't get into it because you've heard it too many times. But if you get it, you know, if you take one drug, it cures, it does it. One drug, non addictive, blah, 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 will fix all of this. Amen. But they rather give you one than you need another and another and another and another. Or all the years of people selling weed. And how about that? we We get a dispensary that it's legal in a state because of white suits that. Got into a room. Yeah, we can make a lot of money. How about that, Zach? The guy, the guys that are in jail right now for weed. <laughs> How sick is yeah, that? That is sick. That is sick. <clears throat> and the last thing I'll let you get out of here. Oh, and, and I'm, I'm, because I'm supposed to meet someone here. I'm, I'm trying to text in the location. Yeah, I'm gonna get you. I just got oh. one more question. Tell me about the uh, prison car story, the brawl. Oh, you're talking about the the gay guy? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me that, and I'll let you go. All right, hold on. Let me let me let me send. Fuck this. that! You're on a podcast. I know, I know, I know. I'm gonna take that phone and break it. <laughs> no, no, got, no, I don't care if you got 16 years or not. I'm counting the five. One, two, five. I'm done. <laughs> now you don't have your phones. <laughs> I'm done. All right, all right. Um, that was what, an asshole move. I know. I'm, I apologize, brother. I apologize. <laughs> I he someone's meeting me here. I just wanted to give him the address. You're at a podcast. I know. Yes, I understand. I understand. I apologize. I apologize, Tommy. I'm sorry. I'm not mad at you. All right. <laughs> Spray your ball. All right. <laughs> All right. So what what had happened was that you're talking about the so in in a pen you run with a car, right? So what happens is there's a group of people that you associate yourself with. It could be the whites. It could be the blacks. It could be the Spanish. And a lot of times they they put you together in a car by your region. So I'm in. I'm from Florida. So when I was in Texas prison, there was a Texas car of all Texas people, and sometimes it was black and white. It depends on if white people didn't want to be on white time, they want to be on Texas time. It all it gets complicated. Yeah. So it's whoever you run with. So when I got there, they asked me where I was from. I said I was from Florida, which was a mistake because I actually went to college in Texas. So I could have claimed Texas because I lived in San Antonio and Austin. So I could have claimed Texas. Had I, if I were to ever go back, I would claim Texas. I would never claim Florida <laughs> because there's way too many masturbators. You know? <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> so I'm in the Florida car. So the Florida car, I realized immediately that I'm like, that was a mistake. I should have never claimed Florida. All these guys are sickos. You know what I'm saying? We're dealing with a lot of dick beaters in Florida. So, which is a bad part about jail is you got to deal with the masturbators. So, <laughs> so we're we're in the Florida car and all of a sudden like we're going to war with DC. So I'm walking around, I'm in the library typing up a motion and I'm coming back and they're like, "Hey, they're having a meeting over in this building because we're going to war with DC." I'm like, "What? We're going to war with the DC car. Do you have a knife?" I'm like, "Uh, no. I'm going to get you a knife. I'd have to count 
we're going to war with DC. You got to be ready because we got to strap up because we're going to go to war. And explain what DC is. I, oh, I know the, what it district is. Of, but... It's the District of Columbia. So you've got inmates from the District of Columbia, which is really not a state. So they don't have any state jails or prisons. So anybody that gets locked up with any misdemeanor or charge in District of Columbia goes to federal prison. Right. right. So we're going to war with the District of Columbia, which is some real thugs and murderous and violent people. Am I correct? They call them the D.C. Blacks? Yes, D.C. And blacks. They're, not, they're like not to be fucked with. They're not to be fucked yeah. with. So they're serious, and they've actually committed a couple of murders on the compound. Oh, yeah. And so now I'm going to war with them. Like, I'm, I'm here. I'm a fraudster. I've never killed or stabbed anybody in my life. White-collar crime. White-collar crime. <laughs> and I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? And Rob, like these DC blacks, no, not you, to be you don't fun. want to fight. They're they're they'll no. So I'm trying to get mental. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to war with DC blacks. I'm gonna be in in a life or death fight with somebody with a knife. So I'm probably gonna get stabbed. <laughs> I'm gonna do my best not to be killed. You know what I'm saying? This is not my m- mental. So they they call. All right, we're having a meeting over in this building, right? To get ready. So when I go into that building, we're there, and one of the leaders of our car is a guy named Iceman. Now, Iceman is, I've seen him in the library in an open relationship with this homosexual. But Iceman has life. He's been locked up over 20 years, and so he's probably never going to see the have the touch of a woman. So I respect him for having the touch of a homosexual male because that's the only loving he's going to get. Do you feel what I'm saying? So you got to take what you can get. So Ice is having the meeting, and he's like, listen, we're going to war, guys, and we're doing this for principle. He's like, a lot of us aren't going to make it. Some of you people who've never been in war or been in a, in a prison brawl are probably going to get stabbed or killed. And I'm like, that's directly right towards me. Like, I've never been in a prison ball brawl. I don't even know how to handle a knife. They're telling me I got to strap it to my hand so when I get blood all over, it doesn't slip out of my hand. And I have to bend over and pick it up where they can shove a knife up my ass. I'm like, no. All this stuff is scaring the dog shit out of me. So he's like, so a lot of us aren't going to make it, but we're doing this for principle. We're letting these motherfuckers from D.C. know they just can't do us any kind of way. They can't just get away with any kind of shit that we stand up for ours, that we make points and we fight back. We ain't no bitches. We're going to handle our business like men. I'm like, yeah, that's right. We hard. We're going to do this. So he's like, all right. So what's going to happen is after Chow, they're probably going to try to jump some of us. So we're going to try to go together as a group. So you got to group up with these people. We're going to go to Chow together. If they try to jump us, the war is on. When we, if we lock down, when we come off a of lockdown, we're going to come up and avenge anybody who stabbed or killed during the first attack. But we're not going to let this end until we make our point. You got it? Everybody like, we got it. All right. All right. When they call a move, everybody get ready to go. So all right, cool. So we all disperse. We're standing around. And so I'm like, um, hey, can I can I ask a question? Can I, I ask like, a question? Yeah, like I was like, yeah, what's up, man? <laughs> yeah, what's up? You know, I said, what's up? <laughs> I said, um, why are we going to war anyway? What happened? <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm like, I, I didn't even hear what happened. I don't did they kill one of ours? They stabbed one of ours? What happened that we're going to war? And when I asked him that, he kind of lowered his head. He looked up and he said, one of them D.C. dudes made a move on my boy. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm like, I'm looking around like, what? Uh, what? <laughs> on your boy? You mean the punk that you were kissing in the library? Yeah. Yeah. So in other words, that's what you're risking your life for. Yeah, like, I'm about to risk my life because a DC dude made a move on your punk. Like, I'm going to die over your punk. This is what's going through my mind. I would be feeling the same way. <laughs> I mean. I'm like, um. But you can't say no or you're dead, right? Well, no, I said no. Oh. I said, um, I'm not going to go to war about some punk. Now that's over. Like, well, everybody. Oh, oh. I said, yeah, man. I said, listen, man. Like I re- and I'm unwrapping the knife. I go, look, I look, you know, I don't say nothing about anybody's lifestyle, but I don't want to be in the middle of some war about a homosexual. You know what I'm saying? That's I don't sleep with a homosexual. 
that's what you got going on. I'm not, I don't have that going on. He said, hey, bro. He go, you drop out of this, you on your own. They jump your ass, you get fucked up. Ain't nobody going to back you up. I said, okay, cool. But I'm not going to war about some gay, some punk. I'm, I'm done. I'm, it's over. So I, I got ready to leave. And then a couple more people from Florida said, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> like, they I don't want to do too. Yeah, everybody started backing out. Like, I was the first person to actually stand up and go, what the fuck? I'm not fighting some dude. I'm not dying over a homosexual, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and you're not saying you have anything against them. It's just you're not going to risk your life. Yeah. Over it. Yeah. yeah. Over, they're making a move on your boy. You're, you're calling a war because of some dick that might be popping you in the ass? No. Nah. And, and I and for the viewers that don't understand, we're not just talking about like a little fight. We're talking about fucking crazy shit. Yes, life or death, like stabbings. Yeah, like actually warfare over a gay guy. Why you got the tower shooting down at you? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. No. No. Um. No. <laughs> yeah. Now you're my boy, and they hurt you. Yes, I'll avenge your 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 life or your stabbing or your beat up. But because they made a flirtation at one of your homosexuals, now. No, I'm not. My life's not worth that. Like, I don't even know your boy. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to risk it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to. Well, hey, look, you had the balls to stand up. Yeah. Many people and, and, and everybody came back and go, man, I'm glad you did that because I wasn't going to go to war. Actually, there was never even a war. They called it off. Yeah, because, because of you. Yeah, because everyone's like, what the fuck? This is crazy. It's like, we're we're actually going to war over. And then I guess I made that a rule, like no going to war over faggots. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you're risking your life. Yes. Oh, yeah, I did want to ask you one more thing. No Sorry. problem. Tony Robbins. What happened with you and Tony Robbins? Well, you know, I worked for Tony Tony Robbins back in 95, started a program. And in and, and 95, it was very big on, I think, call rooms. I think companies were setting up. Computers were coming in big time. Internet and email was developing big time. So call centers and, and customer service centers were growing and Tony Robbins had the idea that all those call center, all those companies that need call centers are going to need people to train those people who need to be in call centers. So he came up with a concept called train the trainer. So he put that together. Now the way I met Tony Robbins is um, a guy on an airplane when I was, when I was stealing those AT&T universal cars, I started flying across the country, Delta. And when I did that, I got air miles to where I could upgrade to first class, which when I first time I flew in first class, I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, I feed you and everything. I know. I was like, holy shit. Probably don't anymore, <laughs> but they used to. <laughs> so, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. So when I got up to first class, I sat next to a gentleman that worked for um, Pulse, which is the company on the back of your Visa card, yeah. which is a, a processing it's company. Kind of in italics. It's yes. Planted, yeah. yeah, it's a processing company, and he was making over $100,000 a year. Mm -hmm. And he's talking to me, and he's telling me, he's like, hey, Tony Robbins is going to be, I said, look, I'm from Atlanta. He goes, hey, Tony Robbins is going to be in Atlanta in, a, in, in about three, four weeks. Are you going? I said, I thought about going, but I think the ticket is $5,000 a piece. He said, then you should absolutely go. I said, man, I'm not paying five thousand dollars to see Tony Robbins. Why would I even do that? He said, well, he goes, take a moment and think about who would pay five thousand dollars to see Tony Robbins, because that show is almost sold out. Like he sells about five thousand tickets, and he sold over forty five hundred tickets at five grand a piece. So ask yourself, who was paying five grand to see Tony Robbins? The heavy what hitters. kind of people? Heavy hitters. So I said, holy shit, you're right. Networking, right? Yeah, networking. So he convinced me, so I paid the five grand to go. When I went, I was probably one of two black people that were there. <laughs> and there were, before there, there were interviews and recruitment centers and like all of the stuff that we did where we got to talk to people and we gave presentations and shit. Tony Robbins called me out and asked me if I wanted a job in his organization where they were training the trainer. So I said, well, you know, um, I don't, because I'm thinking to myself, I'm stealing money. So at a clip of about 15, 16,000 every two months. So I'm, I'm good. He says, well, you know, the job pays a hundred thousand dollar base salary plus travel. You travel the world and I cover all your expenses. I'm like, I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. And good for your scheme too. Yeah. Amen. So I took that job and I traveled around to multiple companies worldwide. Like I've been to Austria, China, 
And when I went to China, like I'd get there and they would give me an interpreter. So as soon as I got there, I had a, when I, like as soon as I landed, there's an interpreter there to interpret everything I said to anybody, right? And when I went in my room, that was the end of my interpreter. You know what I'm saying? It's just, and I have a lot of stories behind that. So I traveled the world training people to train people to, to handle customer service centers, <laughs> call, call room centers, and everything as the as as the big boom of technology is going on in the '90s, I would train people on what you needed to do to train people. He made a fortune oh, I because I think I got a copy of a bill, like he would charge them like about seventy five, eighty grand for a four day seminar I did with his potential trainers. That motherfucker! Oh, he made a fortune, bro. He made a fortune. So, and and I told Matt that, you know, the the team of us was, there was, I think there was seven of us. There was one female and, there, all right, so there was seven of us. Five of them were white, white guys. And there was one female and me. So I said, I think I was a token black guy. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Like, do you have any diversity? Uh-huh. I got him. <laughs> yeah, make sure you get his picture first. <laughs> <laughs> so I probably was a token black guy. And and so I traveled around the world doing that. I did that about almost two years. Really, wow! But and as I was telling Matt, for some reason I had a disease that like I was stealing money beforehand, and Tony Robbins is paying me about ten grand a month. So I'm stacking money in my account. So I I had stolen money. So I had about I'm, what I'm. What's weird is at the time of my arrest, when I told you they came to pick me up for all that credit card fraud. I probably had about 85, 90 grand in the bank. But I was ordering stuff with other people's. So I didn't need other people's credit cards to pay my bills. So I stopped grabbing cards. And I just used other people's credit cards to just buy shit and have it sent to my house. So I kept up my sickness because I really didn't need the money to pay my bills. I kept my sickness up just to order shit that I really randomly didn't need. And when that happened and I got arrested, I guess Tony Robbins got wind of that and he called me up to fire me. You know, and I tell Matt what was impressive is that Tony Robbins called me up to fire me. You know, personally. Yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) Which, like, if you think back, you know, like I've been to his his island on Fiji, which is gorgeous. His huge house. Tony Robbins spent a lot of time telling us about how he never does one on one training. People beg him to do it. He showed us an offer on paper where somebody offered him almost $20 million to give him two-day one-on-one training, and he said no. Well, did you know why? Well, because he says you learn more from a group because different people bring different ideas, you know, and he says somebody on -on one-on-one training want some type of secret that I might not possess. He goes, the secret that he's looking for is going to come from multiple ideas from multiple people. So I can give him a one-on-one training and he not be successful. And therefore, any request for one-on-one training is gone for the rest of my life. Dude, he's, dude is super strategic. Fuck that. I take the 20 million. <laughs> Even that. if you did it one time. So he said, if if I brought you in for $20 million and I gave you one-on-one training, you weren't impressed, you're going to tell everybody, I, that shit wasn't. I don't know why he even charged me 20 You know what I'm saying? And And, and it would ruin the the perception that his one on one training can change your life, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I sure. <laughs> so he said he wouldn't even take that chance, you know. So, but you would have took the, like give, give me the money. I don't need number one. That's all I needed. Thank you. You're out of here. <laughs> he does kill it. I don't like him, but he does kill it. <laughs> he he kills it. I mean, he's got that scam going. To me, it's a fucking scam. Oh yeah, dude. That, I, don't, um, I don't like him at all. You don't you don't like Tony? Talk to me. Why you don't like Tony? That's a long story. <laughs> yeah, I just don't like. Him. And you asked me about this. Well, no, no. I, I, look, I, I give, even if I don't, even if I'm not a fan of some, I don't know him personally, right? right? So who am I to say that if I met him, I would like him? Just from the outside looking in, and whenever I, for some reason, would go out of town, like to drive back to Pennsylvania or whatever, every fucking time I drove, this is probably why I hate his ass, I would get a hotel like halfway, and every, half the time when I was driving like 20, 24 hours back to Pennsylvania and back and forth, when I first moved down here, every half the fucking time, Tony Robbins was in town and I couldn't get a fucking hotel. Ugh. And that pissed me off. And that's when I originally started to hate him. <laughs> and then I have another reason why I don't like him. But I've never met him. So I am I just don't like him from the outside. I don't know how, who he is. He might be the greatest guy on the planet. Well, he's, 
So, so he should come in and do a speech. He should. He should come in. <laughs> his his aura is a positivity. You know what I'm saying? But it it doesn't feel genuine. I'm gonna tell you just from me knowing, it, it it's too positive. It's like, dude, okay. how? What the fuck, man? Like, be real. So I got arrested and bonded out of jail, and like, and I went on uh, a detail. Like, I I actually went on. I bonded out. I was in there a week, so I was supposed to go do a training, and I bowed out. So I had to call in like I'm sick and he got somebody else to cover it. And because it took me a week to get a bond. I was in Cobb County, Georgia, and they, they took forever to give me a bond. So when I bonded out, then my trainings, the things I had overseas got canceled. I did a couple of local ones, but I could tell something was up because I it was normally you work two weeks and you have a week off and you work two weeks. So like he would pop you from spot to spot for two weeks. Then you'd have a week off at home. Then you pop you from spot to spot from two weeks. So I would go to somewhere and go home. Go to somewhere in the U.S. and go home. Yeah. Go to somewhere. Good I would day. actually. And then I was doing support. I wasn't even. I'm like, you're not presenting. You're just supporting me and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, huh. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like my my role got less. But then all of a sudden I get a call from him. You know? And he, he was firing me. You know? But basically he was telling me. That that he under he knew about the arrest and I'm like but I haven't been convicted I mean you could easily get accused but he's saying you know he's like you're right and I completely understand that but he's like he goes I feel like I'm holding you back he gives me this spiel during my firing His that kind of shit spiel yeah that motivated me to like yeah he's right this is an opportunity for me to do something else yeah more fraud <laughs> <laughs> All right. fuck but, him yeah but <laughs> but he fired me kind of telling me like listen. You're at a crossroads in your life, and I don't want to stand in your way of you doing bigger and better things in your life. You know what I'm saying? You're making decisions that's not helping you. The shit's getting higher with this <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> now, that was his way of fucking saying that to you so you don't go to the press or anybody else <laughs> and say Tony Robbins is a fired. dick. That's he right. didn't he give fired a fuck my about black you. Ass. I was the last yeah. thing. That's right. right. <laughs> he fired your black ass, and he was only called to save his own ass. Yes. That's what the fuck he yeah, did. That's what he did. Period. That, 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 Scumbag. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, you know that was a play. I, I, I still love you, Tony. I still love you. Come too. on now. You know you know that was a play. Oh yeah, of course it was a play. I mean, I'm I'm a criminal. What the fuck? He just like what this dude's a fucking criminal. What but, the Yeah, but don't sit there and call a criminal who's you know, just got fucking rocked with fraud and say <laughs> I'm, Oh, I think I'm holding this is you a, back. I'm holding you back. I want to give you positivity. <laughs> you have opportunity. You're only looking at sixty <laughs> fucking years or twenty years. I want to give you the opportunity to, to commit more fraud before you go in. <laughs> he's dirty motherfucker. I'm sure he's changed some people's lives. We can say that. I'm sure he has. To me, he reminds me of the televangelist on TV that touches the person and he heals them, and the power of God is in them. And, and he throws they drank they the back. fucking Kool Aid, and they keep drinking the Kool Aid. And Tony Robbins, Tony Robbins, Tony Robbins. Again, I'm sure he changed some people's life. I'm. He's a very smart man. He's, he's very. He's, he's done it with his business. L listen, I'm going to tell you, I I would like my guesstimation of like just processing with that train the trainer, and that's gone. That that whole process is gone. I would like 150, 200 million dollars. Oh, he 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 racked up. We were constantly going, like uh. 60, 70 million. Th these co corporations were paying it like. Hey, look, I, I I respect him for what he's done, but he's full of shit. Yeah, don't yeah hate, I mean, you know, don't hate the player, hate the game. Man. I hate the game. I'm, I hate the game. <laughs> I hate the game. <laughs> I'm a hater. Hate the, don't hate the player. I hate the, hate the game, game that he's playing. Yeah, yeah, no, I hate I, the game he's playing. I actually, I just don't like the snakiness. Oh. I don't like the snakiness, but I respect that. Hey, he's player, got more money game. than we got. So yeah. who the fuck are we to talk? He's got a, right. he's got an island on Fiji. You said yes, he does. Oh, well, fuck yeah, he's gorgeous. He's good. Yeah, gorgeous. Yeah, with with like people who live on that island. Are his servants like their village? There's villages, slaves. Or yeah, they're slaves. slaves. They're actually indigenous slaves. So, so now this fuck has a slave. Yes, on his island. Well, he and pays, then goes and preaches well, to people. He pays well, them I'm, cash. You know. So oh, I mean, I'm sure he. When does. is he being canceled? He's got to be canceled soon. Oh no. Oh. I don't think he's doing. I think he's just living off his. I don't know. I don't. I he's haven't still, even. I wanted to look him up and see what he is kind of up to. Yeah, he's still around. Yeah, he's still around. Facebook, still I see around. stuff on Facebook yeah. every so often. Though. Oh, that's uh, what. He, that's probably where he is now, I making fortune. I know. I don't know. Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins. I'll tell you a story one day about him. 
<clears throat> gotta hear it. Gotta All right, Zach, it. Isaac, I'll let you get to your girl. And I'll give you your phone back. Thank you. <laughs> I gotta pee again. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> what do you gotta do? All right, Zach. Thank you for your time, brother. No I, lo problem. I look forward to having you back and getting the rest Any, of the stories. Anytime. We probably got another three hours we could do. <laughs> Let's go. You gotta, you gotta get some pussy. Yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> get your pussy. Then you'll be refreshed. Go back in a month or two, and then we'll finish it off. Let's go. Let's All go. All right, brother. Thank you for your time. Hey, anytime, guys. Y'all take it easy. Anything you want to promote? No, I don't have anything. Not yet. Next Not time yet. when you come back. Next bro. time, I got you. All right, brother. I All appreciate right. it. No problem. I'm glad you got through that 16 years, man. That's tough. It was. And you're normal. And you're not all you fucked so? up. Thanks yeah, yeah, I would tell you. Right. Ask him. I would tell you. If you were all <laughs> fucked up, I said you're a little fucked up, but you'll get out of it. <laughs> I may I maintain my normalcy. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, brother. Thank all right. you. You're all right.